Hello, we've got some must-see TV for you today. Catch a Contractor with Adam Carolla premieres Sunday, February 28th at 10 p.m. or 9 central on Spike. Spike! Ooh. Tune in as Master Contractor and Carpenter, Adam Carolla and his team track down shoddy contractors and bring them to justice. For the contractor, it's a chance of redemption. For the families, Adam brings home the justice they're looking for. For the viewers, it's brilliant entertainment. Tune in Sundays starting February 28th on Spike. Hey, kids, Squarespace also sponsoring today's episode of The Chat Show. Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio for a free trial and 10% off. Go to squarespace.com and use offer code Pollock, that's P-O-L-L-A-K. Welcome back, everybody, to Kevin Pollock's Chat Show. We've been away. How about you? Not buffering. And for those of you who enjoy the show audibly, that's got to suck. It really does. Also, you think that every week they go, oh, fuck, he did it again, and no one cares. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's why I know what Jamie's thinking. Well, that's but. how we feel. <laughs> To work I say with that you. about everything you do. Nobody cares. <laughs> Literally five years now, and every time you do it, I'm like, uh, is this the stroke? <laughs> you know it's coming. Because one of these days yeah. you're gonna be you're gonna be the boy who cried wolf. And by the way, at least I've learned that, to not talk over them. That I used will to be do that all the time. <laughs> I used to be like, oh wait, we're doing the thing. I wanna do dick I wanna be the dick Sean of podcast. Yeah. You're you're gonna stroke out and it's gonna take us twenty minutes to get you help. <laughs> or let everyone know. <laughs> Just to figure out, yeah. oh no, this is not the longest buffering I'm asking ever. the universe right now to let me be the Dick Sean of podcasting. I do want to die live on the podcast. All right. Yeah, okay. Done. Thank you, universe. Um, first of all, the big thanks out to our dear friend and poker pal who's made the game uh, last couple of weeks, uh, Shelly Azoff, who set Jamie and I up with all the premium passes last night to see Paul Simon and Sting. And we're going to talk about that odd coupling in a moment. Uh, last night at the new Fabulous Forum, uh, which they've totally refurbished, and it's pretty fucking exciting. Simon and Sumner? Simon and Sumner. And yeah. Gordy. Gordy. Yeah. Dana Carvey's old bit, which I, I still I kept doing love. that last I kept doing yeah. Dana's old bit of it. Fellas, you named yourself a verb. Hey, fellas, does. would you guys mind calling me Sting? Shut up, Gordy. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, he would do this thing. Dana would do this thing. Yeah. Why? <laughs> uh, yeah, it really was uh, a bizarre coupling. When they sang together, it sounded sweet which Paul Simon even commented on, which was kind of funny. And it was so ironic because the, I, I can't say milts because I didn't want to fuck any of them, but the 40-something <laughs> the women in front of us who would get up and dance beautifully while Sting performed would sit, they couldn't sit down fast enough when Paul Simon was on, and then Jamie and I were up, and I was dancing horribly just to get in their face, but they never turned around. <laughs> but uh, it was, you know, what a strange, you know, promoters obviously put this thing together. Yeah, sure, Sting, you could sell out the form, but if you had Paul Simon, you could definitely sell it out. And then vice versa, do they need each other? What is the point? I don't understand. I feel like the two, it's like a bar bet the two of them had. I, I, we were talking about this before the show, and it's like these two performers together doesn't, does not make any sense to us. Yeah, and you really start to realize as you're watching these two, Sting is all about the music and the vibe, and you get up and you can't, you have to move, and Paul Simon is that and great lyrics on top of it. And just, I don't know. It was a very. I was saying, where's my James Taylor Paul Simon concert? Right? <laughs> Mixed together. That's they I'm hand out about. pillows at the entrance. I, they <laughs> hey, hand out. What? I enjoy both those artists. Very so do I. But I'm just saying they both they both have tender songs. Ah. Oh. Um, and then I also wanted to give a shout out to the fine folks at the San Francisco Sketch Fest, which we went up to uh, last weekend. Jamie Kenny did, and I. Jamie and our own Dr. Chen went up the weekend, weekend before. 
And as much as I'd like to share details with you about that weekend, nobody's talking. <laughs> Uh, we got to mic Dr. Chen at some point because we do need to hear about his version of what Sketchfest was like. But they went oh, to Sammy see. Sammy was with us that weekend too. Slipknuts. I, I had a bunch of shows. Not Sammy. To, nobody cares. I'm going to get to Sammy in a second to tell me about his shows. But Slipknuts. <laughs> yes. The sketch group that everyone's been waiting to see live on stage, <laughs> introduced on the Conan O'Brien program or program. When do you think that was, Kenny? Like ten years ago, probably. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be quite a while ago because John Glazer was mm -hmm. still a writer on yes. the show. Definitely pre 9 11 because a lot of uh, conspiracy theorists believe that, that had slip, Slipknot's had something to do with the ultimate decision. Oh, you're thinking of the band Slipknot. Slipknot. <laughs> Slipknuts. Uh, so tell me about the reunion. First of all, they came out and did their bit. Which last, but which is like a, a Four 90 minutes. second bit. No, it's like a 90 second bit. <laughs> and there's pounds of nuts on the floor. Yes, many nuts, bags of nuts. But they they come out, on. they slip, they try to get back up, they slip. Yeah. 90 slip. seconds later, they go, all right, good night. Yes, and then, they, and, then they, and then they went off stage, brought the house lights up for a couple minutes, <laughs> and, then they, and then they came back out and was like, oh, apparently we're contracted to fill 90 minutes here. So they were trying to think of more creative ways to do it, so then they did it in like sl super slow-mo. And then they, came, yeah, the, <laughs> then they came out again with like craft service. They were like, we're tripping on broccoli. Like, <laughs> and, uh, and then they just had like other, friend, other comics come out. And, yeah. Uh, and there was uh, some video. There were some uh, videos too that they yeah. made. Yeah. And Sammy, great. tell us about your shows at the uh, the Sketch Fest. Uh, I, I did uh, three. Uh, the first of which you can hear. Uh, I did the Chewing It podcast with uh, Kevin Heffernan and Steve Lemmy. It's available for download now. Do not download it while you are listening to this show. However, please wait until the conclusion. Do not turn to another channel. See, I'm um, fine downloading it. Just don't listen. Don't to listen it. to it. Don't, don't <laughs> have Paul Ekechacho in one ear yeah. and chewing it in the other. No. That will not work. And drive your I've car? I've tried. What year is this? Honestly. Uh, and, then, uh, and then what else did I do? I did uh, uh, a competitive erotic fan fiction, which is also a podcast. <laughs> that should be. I didn't know and, that was a podcast. And uh, I don't know if that one's posted yet, uh, but uh, check my Twitter feed. I will, I will let you know the second that it does. And then uh, I did Stardom, the uh, Build Wire hosted uh, Game show. Game show, yeah. Which was tremendous fun. Tell us again your Twitter handle. Uh, I'm at Sam Levine, S A M M L E V I N E. Lovely. We Thank should you. promote uh, our own Twitter handles more often. By that I mean your own. Well. <laughs> Where do we find Dr. Chen? Is it, evil, is it at one. Evil Dr. Chen now? No, why should they care? <laughs> no? No. Just at Kenny Chen? I haven't updated my uh, Twitter <laughs> in five years. These kids are moving off to the Instagram. Uh, Jamie's, Jamie's been off the Twitter as well. I don't care for it. All right. Um, Who needs to see your photos of lunch? We're coming to you live on YouTube, those of you watching us uh, on the live stream. Uh, the rest of you uh, catching us after the fact, after uh, your February 16th, uh, tune in live once, won't, won't you? Michael Showalter, I believe, next Sunday, and um, on affairs uh, the Sunday after that, Academy Awards Sunday. I think we might do an early show so everyone can get to their Academy Award brunches. Do it. A lot of brunching. Um, on subscribe to us on YouTube. Write a review, you fucks. I think that's it. I believe that is the pre show nonsense. Did you watch the Tom Hanks and Larry David show? It's up on uh, the iTunes and the Earwolf and the YouTube. <laughs> um, and now for today's guest, which we're unbelievably excited about. We've had a couple of dozen, I don't know the exact number, possibly 26. Former cast members of Saturday Night Live. This is our first active. But I'm going to start the show this way. Kobe. Shaylin. Taryn. Smulders. Kill him. Can I please buy a real name? Please welcome Darren Kill him. My given name, man. <laughs> Why do I have to attack it? That's who I am. All right, let's go somewhere else then. <laughs> Los Angeles. We have weird names, all right? <laughs> um, Kobe is Yakoba, too. Sure so it she is. Brought, she brought it closer to America. To reality. Yeah, exactly. Um, and Shaylin, I didn't want to mispronounce. Is yeah. it Kato? <clears throat> Kato. Kato. Yes, I knew I would mispronounce it. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you, you don't want to do Kato because of the 
to because of the Green Hornets sidekick. I was thinking mm -hmm. OJ's uh, pool boy. Oh, aren't we all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's always nice occasionally to run into Cato Kalin. Have you have you had that experience? I've never I've never had no. The, because the... he still has that attitude like, hey, what's up? How's it going? Like, yeah, sure. Like you're not a circus freak for your entire existence. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. <laughs> just just pushing down this horrible experience. Yes. Yeah. Like and nightmare. same hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same Good hair. for him. <laughs> yeah, you want to hold on to that. Yeah. That's Sam, I'm just saying, he's at my guest house right now, and he's been great. <laughs> Right. He's quiet. He, he pays the rent on time. And when you run by in the middle of the night mm -hmm. with a bloody glove. He wasn't looking. He looked the other way. He's he, vacuuming he, with headphones on. If he's yeah, learned, yeah, yeah. If exactly he's learned right. nothing else, it's to vacuum every night with headphones, headphones on. <laughs> Just in case. Yeah. Has anybody ever done the whole show facing this way, by the way? <laughs> no, that would be this because would, this would be a first. You're getting notes uh, from yeah. your control room We have had people look at themselves. There's a monitor <laughs> here, mm -hmm. yeah. and then you have a teleprompter if need be right there. Like yeah. this, and I have a curtain <laughs> to look at. Yeah. That's a lovely You're drawing filing the eye. cabinet. I know, that's true, that's true. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, numbers 37 through 40, that's where they keep God, the good stuff. God forbid. <laughs> uh, let's go here then, Los Angeles High School for the Arts. Yeah. Uh, telling a stranger that at age 15, ever get your ass handed to you? Loxa. Uh, no, I guess it should have. Um, no, there, there's prestige. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There's. Um, well, I, I grew up in Big Bear, right? Which is like mountain town, football's a big deal. Yeah, you came culturally. from crushing bear skulls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why one of the things to I was, was going <laughs> to ask. Then the. the um, Son, put the bear's head down. Right. We'd like to send you to the uh, Los Angeles High School. Yes, Papa. <laughs> um, <laughs> that'll get you to the school. Of arts. Yeah, no, it was it was a it was a culture clash for sure. But even in Big Bear, you were ready. I was I was you know school play guy. Right. You know it, it, I don't think it surprised anybody. Um, but, I, and I, but I was athletic too. Like in Big Bear, I played uh, baseball and soccer and was pretty good at both. Um, but there are no sports teams at Loxa. No. I, I, yeah. You're, you look shocked. <laughs> well, um, can you still tell us how to drain a deer? Oh, man. Just from What memory. do I do? What do I, what do, I do? No. What do I, I did horseback riding. Sure. There was, like, definitely the Big Bear Rodeo, and you, you could go to that. Um, Oktoberfest. I don't oh, know. I, I was not as, as mountainy as I should be. I, I would, uh, yeah, these are, like, the what I felt like. This only happens here. Little that I know, there's a country called Germany. Um, no, I was I was I was a, a nice, well-rounded kid. I think. Yeah, I mean, I've got a quote here, if I may. Where sure. you're, you're described yourself, uh, weird dichotomy of nerd sports fan and musical theater. I never said that. <laughs> um, no, yeah, that's exactly right. Um, yeah, and, and and maybe 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 not necessarily in that order, but pretty close to that order. Nerd first, for sure. Right. And then my dad was a pretty good athlete and um, almost went to college to kind of pursue that that road of, of playing in the majors and stuff. And, and <laughs> it would have been great if you ended a period on the word college. college. Almost, <laughs> well, went, to almost college. went to college. You know, <laughs> little victories for us, yeah. us small town folk from We didn't ask for a lot. <laughs> my dad almost went to college. <laughs> Uh, so he must went on a scholarship. You were saying? Uh, yeah, yeah. He he was good enough, and, and scouts were involved at one point, I think maybe. And um, but he he had, was bit by the acting bug pretty severely, um, right. and and pursued that. Uh, so yeah, so it was a good balance, I think. I, I like me. How did they settle in? Uh, <laughs> here's one. How did they settle in Big Bear to begin with? Because you were uh, born oh, not oh. financially well off. Sure. We lit, We were in Redondo Beach. We were in the South Bay. Uh, and they could afford to buy there. My father at that point was in construction, had his own construction uh, firm, crew. So he knew they could buy something small, build on it, hopefully flip it down the line. They also had five kids yeah. whom they all wanted to go Is that an Irish thing? Good school. Uh, no, it's a slutty mom thing. I got gotcha. you. Uh, <laughs> different dad, different dads for my two older sisters. We've said too much. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I I, uh, I I shot up there momentarily for the classic known as uh, Doctor Doolittle Two. Of so, can we stand? <laughs> Do, can, they can't hold me in frame. I would stand, but there's no one manning the well, camera. Luckily, it's audio. So if you just tell them you're standing. Um, 
and I just remember thinking, it's so hard to believe this is that close to Los Angeles, and you could be anywhere yeah. in, in the world. I mean, mm -hmm. other than the accents, it is as stunningly beautiful of a mountainside town yeah. as it gets. I agree. I, I truly love it. I was yeah. there from age like six and a half to 16. Yeah. Um, and I, ju I just loved it. So clean, snow in the winter, lake sports in the summer. Um, you know, you, it's the play, you know, you open your door and your dogs run out in the neighborhood and when it's dinner time they come running back sort of thing. It, it, it was really pretty ideal yeah. uh, for a kid of that age, you know. And, and that's what Big Bear, I think it's like around probably 37,000 population and it's a lot of like middle class families that go up for, because it's a pretty good school system too. And then there's a big departure of families. People leave the mountain right. to create opportunity for said kids. And then there's that feeling of... Um... Little House on the Prairie, or um, what was the Good Night John Boy? Oh, uh, the Waltons. The Waltons. A little bit of the Waltons as well, mm -hmm. where you do come down from the mountain at some point. Yeah. To the big damn city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. Uh, for sure, yeah. We, we went back down to the South Bay, which is where we had come from, so we had connections and family and friends there. So it didn't seem super foreign. There was still sure. some... Uh, and, and my dad, he would uh, commute... We were there for nine years. I would say he had three or four jobs in Big Bear in, in that time span. The rest of the time. The rest of the time, he'd get up at like 3 a.m. on Monday, sure. drive down to the South Bay, where a lot of his business was, drive back up Friday afternoon. And then he would also coach sports. He'd coach Little League or soccer. So he'd come up for a Wednesday afternoon, head right back down Thursday morning. Pretty amazing. And if I grow the dry cleaners in the bank in the same day. I know. You've got to lay <laughs> down. Nap. You need a four-hour nap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, um, yeah, it was, uh, and, and so him doing that and me getting into the arts high, the first year, my sophomore year of high school, I commuted with him. I'd go down during the week, stay at my grandmother's in Long Beach, go to school, and then come back on the weekends. And my mom was like, enough, we're, we'll, we'll go back down. So we ended up in Manhattan Beach. But that first, I remember the first day in LOXA signing up for classes, going into the administration office. Uh, I'm there with my dad, and we're like trying to get me into computer science or whatever, you know, some transfer. And next to us is a very lovely gentleman who I came to know as Anthony. Uh, pirate stockings, a tight black skirt, um, like a like a sort of Michael Jacksony blazer, like military style jacket, you know, with a little bit of fringe. White pa face painted white. No, no. Uh, redrawn eyebrows. This is for signing up for classes. He's just there doing his business. Yeah, I mean, we, we had guys who would show up to school in dresses. There, you know, it, it was it was an incredible. It was Anthony Hopkins, school. right? It was yeah. Sorry, it was. Did okay. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. That wasn't was, clear. Good point. Sorry, he was researching a role. That no. wasn't yeah. clear. No. Oh my God, we were all white bread kids. <laughs> okay. um, yeah. No. It, it, at the time, you're 15, and and I really think like the decision to go to that school was, Darren, you got into this high school. Big Bear High School is a year-round schedule, which means like there's big, there's no summer break. There's a month in summer, a month in winter. So if you want to go back to Big Bear High, you have to go to school next week. And if you want to choose to go to Loxa, you have another month of summer. And I was Easy. like, oh, Loxa, <laughs> Loxa, and that is the so decision that changed the course of my life because I didn't want to. I wanted more time off of school. It's so true. Like that, like time off and girls. Every major decision in my life has yeah. been. Motivi motivated by those two factors. So lazy and horny. Yeah. Oh my God. Are the two the words story of used Columbus. most <laughs> yeah. when describing my dear friend Taryn. Uh, is Eddie? I'm going to screw up this name too. Redmayne, your mortal, still your mortal enemy, as you once insisted. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm hot and cold on that guy. If we're going to be honest, I'm hot and cold. He'll give a, an out. I saw him in red. On uh, on Broadway. On the Broadway. Fudge, he was good. Mm -hmm. So good. And then he's also that sort of like quivering, trembling, like I, I watched Pillars of the Earth and kind of wanted to pull my hair out. Um, didn't know nothing about the guy. No. Could be literally the most generous, greatest human being on the planet. Well. But as a fan. It's oh, interesting you, have, you say that. You have, we got him to say this about you. Oh, my gosh. Totally kidding. Oh. Ah. This is where the show would be uh, great. Oh, man. When I, we have the production meetings and I say, these are the areas yeah. we need to improve on. When I say we go to the thing, we got to have a thing. 
Yeah. That's that's my bad. I forgot to call it. Shit! That's all right. Uh, it's a strictly snobby, yeah. you know, sin a snob. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking awesome is what it is. Right. Um, then let's jump to the present. We'll go from, okay. from the early Big Bear days right up to uh, the illegitimates. I'm unbelievably excited oh, about this. Nice. Please tell yeah. us more. How uh, did this whole thing start? Um, uh, guys in the outer shell, I forgot to ask, pull up a graphic if you can from the interwebs from uh, The Illegitimates, the new comic book that was launched uh, December? Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I love comic books. I love all things uh, superhero-y comic uh, animation uh, therein. Mm -hmm. And this was an idea I've had for quite a while. And I think like the first iteration was I lived in an apartment with like five dudes and trying to think of funny concepts for the five of us to come together and play brothers, but we don't look alike, and what would that mean? Right. And also being a huge, huge James Bond fan, uh, came up with a, this concept that, you know, what if uh, on many of his, uh, you know, conquests, he, uh, he, he, there, was, there was some baggage to come out of it, uh, some real life ramifications of having sex unprotected kids. <laughs> You got to protect yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then, and so yeah, so that's where it came out of like, you know, bastard children of James Bond from his various adventures. And then, and that idea, I was like, that's really fun. I really, really like that idea as opposed to wasting this on whatever web video I would have shot with my roommates. Sorry, roommates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I love you, but you were dead weight. Yeah. Um, also known as quicksand. Yeah. Quick, yeah, quicksand. Yeah. yeah. Quicksand. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I just started to explore it. Uh, a little more earnestly, and had a friend, Mark Andreco, who helped helped write the Illegitimates with me, who has worked in comic books, and said, "Is this a thing?" He said, "It's definitely a thing. I'd love to help you work on it. Great. How? I don't have time." And and neither of us did. And right. then I got a really cool job, uh, and it gave me a little bit more money to have in my in my. That's a sentence. In my account. Mm -hmm. um, no, and I, I just so I just finally said I'll, I'll pull the trigger, and I had this great sort of New York moment on the subway, my first season, um, with said deadweight roommates. Um, <laughs> they come out annually. We do a guy trip, uh, and there was this beautiful family, husband, wife, and a, and a daughter close to my daughter's age. And he kind of did the look, and he's like, hey, "Aren't you on?" I said, "Yeah, yeah." And he said, "And you're married too?" And I said, "Yeah, I am." Uh, he said, she came to our offices. And I said, where do you work? He's like, oh, I'm uh, the editor for Batman Comics at DC. And I went, <laughs> and I had to push my giant erection down. Uh, Mike March is the nicest guy. And, uh, and I was like, I was there on that tour. That was my Father's Day gift from, from Kobe, was to tour the DC offices in New York, oh, God. which is the best. And so I invited him to a show, and we, we struck up a friendship. And then I, then I sort of just said, uh, OK, I, I want to try to make this a reality, and, and uh, two and a half years later, The Illegitimates is, is on shelves, which is really awesome. How often do uh, issues... Monthly. Monthly. So we're now two, three in? Three, yeah. Three came out at the beginning of, of February. And uh, how unbelievably... First of all, walk me through the various stages of that mm -hmm. to... Let's jump to hot off the press... You're sure. holding issue one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there, uh, there's a lot. So it's reaching out to Mike. Mike I mean, there's a shit ton of work, and we can't even fathom. A bit off. So Two and much a half more than I, than I could chew. Yeah. And fortunately, had very uh, smart, creative mouths around me to help digest it. But also wildly busy with SNL. Yeah. So that you could uh, have this creative, extraordinary moment in your own life. Yeah. While giving birth to this side project that would otherwise consume your life. Yes, no, and, and, and should be. And I guess if there's any regret, and they're not much because it's a reality and, and it's maybe the thing that I'm most proud of just because it came only of me yeah. uh, initially. Um, but I, it's a full-time thing and it should be a full-time thing. And I just myself haven't allowed for it to be my one and only thing. It's been one of sure. probably three or four things. Um, but fortunately, Mark helping me write, Kevin, our artist. So that, that, was, that was the first step, is reaching out to Mike, get me in touch with artists, inkers, colorists, that whole process of putting it together. Right. Sent me names. I just reached out via email, and people were on board and excited. And, uh, and issue one was done fairly quickly. Issue one was kind of completed, 
and we use that as a selling tool to go around to different publishers. Because we could have done it online and we could have self-published, but that would have been a lot more money out of my pocket. Is that the first? Yeah, yeah. So this is Jerry Ordway, who did artwork for like the Death of Superman series. Just an incredible, incredible artist. And uh, yeah, this is the subscription uh, uh, cover that you can't see on your Looks like a couple of Lugers iPhone. for the L's and the illegitimates, uh, and then pregnant yep. silhouettes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bond, Bond <laughs> sipping a martini with a bunch of pregnant Bond girls around. Um, yeah, and and uh, and then IDW, who's been phenomenal and and publishes a ton of titles that I love. Like I'm a huge Ninja Turtles guy. I really love Lock and Key. And then they do Ghostbusters and Transformers, so a lot of properties that that Fine. I enjoy. Um, and and they were the ones who like got it and said yes and came on board and uh, and yeah. They, and now it's now it's in in stores. Yeah. And you did a shit ton of press for it initially. As much, yeah, as much as, as people would let me do. Yeah, I mean, when uh, our own J-Mac put together the dossier, there were 35 pages. That's all he could come up with. Okay. Being the wuss <laughs> that he is. But wow, <laughs> 31 of those 35 pages were about the press that you did. No, oh, awesome, no I'm kidding. Awesome. It was pretty great how much stuff there was and how it's, much. Yeah, it's, imp it's important to me. And, and that, like I said, it, it's uh, but also just maybe a project of love. You the know? timing of the two and a half year wait allowed you to not only uh, settle in and find your way and be comfortable and be a breakout in your new job, sure. but also get to this lofty place of by last December, you almost couldn't have been in a be better opportunity to, true. to get access to all the promotion the comic book would need. Ab absolutely. So that's kind of great. It was, it was great. It worked yeah. out as good as it can be, and, and I, I earnestly feel no spin that each issue of the comic, we've done six now, each issue gets so much better just because right. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a greenhorn, so yeah. what do I know? But, but uh, have surrounded myself with really talented people that have been very, very helpful. Um, I, I we mentioned the uh, the Dana Carvey uh, reference. I, I can remember being on the phone with him. I'm sorry for those of you that I told this story before on the show. And he said, uh, I said, what's going on this week? He said, I got to do Ross Perot. I said, well, what does that mean? He said, I don't know. They gave me a tape of him on Larry King, and I got to do it by Saturday. No one had ever thought about doing it. He'd only been on Larry King twice. It wasn't in really the... You know, he was in the zeitgeist, but the mm -hmm. idea of mocking him yet, people were still wowed by him yeah. in those early days. And so he and I shot the shit on the phone. By the end of the call, we both had a flawless Ross Perot. Wow. And I said, well, this stinks because Saturday you're going to become famous for doing Ross Perot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I'm just the asshole that's doing Dana Carvey's Ross Perot. Sure, sure. How is it for you, because you've, you had to audition which we'll get to, and you came fully loaded with your own stuff and impressions and things. Mm -hmm. And then that, that, just that task of learning someone new. They're gonna throw a tape of you, here's a guy you've yeah. never even thought about doing. Yeah. Like, is the, was the Michael Sarah already in your quiver, or did you have to learn that? Michael Sarah, I, ha I have my own Kevin Pollock, was a suggestion from my friend Todd Stashwick when I was auditioning. Ooh. And he's like, I think you could do a really good Michael Sarah. So he gave me, he planted that seed, uh, and just going back and watching it. And it's, you know, it's literally first season Arrested Development Michael Sarah. Um, I, I'm sure you'll, you'll appreciate this, and, and it's not to cheapen it, um, but I have taken doing impressions for granted because it, it, it comes, it's a little musical, I hear it. Yeah. It's not like I'm, you know, all right, another rep. <laughs> you know, I got to get into this. It, yeah. It's sort of like I see, and I kind of go, <laughs> you know, and then people go, hey, that sounds like a thing. Um, that did not sound like a thing. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I, I've got to come up with original characters too, Kevin. <laughs> Do not stifle my process. Then I'd like to call that one Philip, if I may. <laughs> so it's yeah. actually a, a perfect impression of Todd Stashwick, who I also know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's the, and, and does good impressions too himself. Yeah, he's he's a very funny guy. Uh, Second City guy. How much did Mickey Mouse factor in when building the Michael Sarah? Because there's a little bit. Oh, not not intentionally. No. No. All right. Because I got to Bill Clinton by uh, starting with Jimmy Carter and adding Elvis Presley. Oh. Okay. There's always a. Uh, I find sometimes there's a soup. Yeah. I, I. It always comes after the fact. People go like, "Oh, that sounds like your thing," and I go like, "Oh yeah, I guess it, it does right. that." But right. I try. I try to go. 
straight for the target. But but impressions to me, like comedy in general, I was like an actor kid, like uh, show busy ish family. Um, my mom took me and my younger siblings out to audition like when I was five and they were three and one or whatever and I was the only one who could walk into a room and be like hi you know <laughs> hi you're yeah what the, I like your shirt you know right um but it but it wasn't necessarily like full full I didn't have full-blown kid actors syndrome um it was like five to seven and then three years off and then got back into it a little bit when I was around 12 and then another break and then once I got to the to the high school I got very serious about it um, That's when you would run into Sam Levine at auditions. Exactly, yeah, And yeah, say, yeah. we can't Fantastic. be up for the same part, can we? Nope. <laughs> was we really was the aforementioned Stunky and Blitz, was it the yes. first thing we read for together? Yeah, I, I feel like that's the first time we met. Okay, yeah. yeah. How old were you guys? Fox family. 18. 18, yeah, 18 19. 19. Um, well, 82? Same year, yeah. 82? Yeah. Yeah. We're all within... We're six at, weeks of yeah, each other. Yeah, we are actually. actually. Are. Oh, January, all right. he's March. You're, and you're April. Oh, awesome. The Fool's Day. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, actual April Fools. I know. <laughs> so I should have seen it coming, but but it was always like I'm going to act, like you know, like I I was doing pilot seasons and right. like I tested for Smallville for the best friend role, you know. Right. Uh and then comedy happened accidentally, which uh, my my older sister Rachel Warner who actually had few run-ins with you in San Jose, the San Jose Improv, which which is where sh she lives now. Um, That's hilarious. Was is eight years older than me and hipper and funnier than than I could ever have hoped to have been, in, in our youth. So like, SNL, Kids in the Hall, and anything cool, you know, she found it first, and I kind of like, fed off of her droppings. Was she turning you on to it? Uh, yeah, in a sense, absolutely, which is absolutely, great. yeah. Um, the way that uh, Jamie's sister drug her to uh, see. Uh, what was it? Um, Indian Summer, I think. Yeah. Well, my sister Jacqueline uh, molded my entire taste in pop culture. So yeah. When it came to music, tell whatever. But I tell you, I'm envious. I didn't have. I had. I have one older brother who turned me on to nothing. Yeah. Other than pot, which I thank him for to this day. But <laughs> but there was no. Well, Jill, hey, you've got to see Blazing Saddles. Jill, my eldest yeah. sister, not. At, I like the only thing she's really into is James. She loves the James Bond movies. Other than that, she's like she's not into like pop oh, culture right. at all. But Jacqueline is like, yeah, she was, yeah. But I find it's it's one or the other where you have, it's either a sibling or a friend. Somebody says you've got to yeah. fill in the blanks. Yeah, so. she was, uh, yeah, my, my comedy education mostly came through her. My, my dad loves, my dad was like uh, Monty Python, Bill Cosby, Mel Brooks, right. all, all that stuff. But um, Me, probably. Uh, all, all you, <laughs> mostly you. <laughs> no, I think that, entirely you. Weird. I think the other people I said were you doing them. Right. Um, yeah. So, so, uh, so the concept of being a comedian or being on SNL wasn't was, in your. I had I had a better time like fathoming being a movie star sure. than be, you know being Luke Skywalker than being on SNL. Right. Um, and then I'm 19. The management firm that I'm with represents Keenan Thompson, and Mad TV calls and says, "Does Keenan want to audition?" And they said, uh, no, not right this second, but we have a guy who we feel you should see. Because, I, because Im impressions were a thing I just came to me and would do to make people laugh. And I was loud and obnoxious and, and funny-ish. At 19, who were your impressions? A there was a lot of young guys. It was like the, like the Hall of Fame of WB, right? So it was like <laughs> Josh Jackson and James Vanderbeek. It was like all that stuff. You've got to give us a little uh, Vanderbeek. Uh, all right, I think, uh, I think we're... Oh, come on, Joey. You, you can't possibly think I'm not going to get an NYU. <laughs> <laughs> sort of that thing. Sure. Um, yeah, so it was like that. And, and they, they had me go in. And then, and then I'd, take like big, I'd do like a Bono, which is me just doing the beautiful day dance over furniture. Um, <laughs> and it, just, it was just a freak thing where I was like, what? What? A sketch show? I couldn't. <laughs> Can I? <laughs> this will be fun. And 19 and to be a main cast member hadn't happened. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was, I was, I did half a season. I was featured, you know, low man. But yeah, I was 19 and and got the gig and yeah, Mad TV for half half a year and that just thrust. I remember the TV Guide article that said comedians Bobby Lee and Taron Killam and I was like, I am an actor. <laughs> How dare you, sir? Um, oh, so that's where Jebediah was born yeah, from. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That exact moment yeah. in time. Oh, great. 19 year old. Right up in TV Guide. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is that per- before or after this week's loser on the biggest loser? <laughs> the, um, the outrage of a 19 year old. There's yeah. nothing funnier. Yeah. <laughs> <I know. laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, and after that, it was it was uh, comedy became the focus. Yeah, um, well, Groundlings. So what, what now yes. was Dick Blasucci still at the Mad TV? Dick was running it. Okay, because him uh, I met through the Christopher Guest and. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, and always loved. Dick. Very nice guy. Very yeah. nice guy. Uh, that year was crazy because I'm on a sketch. I'm on a sketch show, and I remember like the debut of Mad TV after the Super Bowl. Stay tuned after the Super Bowl for the Mad TV special and. You know, Phil Lamar and Brian Callen and, all, you know, then uh, Nicole Sullivan seeing all these people, you yeah. know. Uh, it was crazy. And and I was so unprepared. I was just in, I just was plunged into the deep end, um, not knowing what to do. And like, hey, is this a sketch? And like, I even like have some notes written down from just the lamest sketch idea. Just awful. Just, you know, college freshman sure. sketches that you, you were do, 19 like, for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but a balance of like a strong performer right. doesn't know how to write for himself, and there were people who really looked out for me. And on the cast, it was like Will Sasso and Mo were great, were so great, and took me took me under their wing and looked out for me. And then uh, on the writing side, in particular, Michael Hitchcock uh, really took really like was my his door was always open. He was so helpful. Anything of any substance that I got on the air, I feel was was written by him at least in part. Um, and then so many of the other people that I respected and were the people I looked to, you know, like Jennifer Joyce was there, uh, and Michael McDonald, all these people had come from the Groundlings Theater. Mm. So when I left Mad, because they did, I, they did ask me back, but for fewer episodes than promised. Fuck them. And that's what I was told to say. <laughs> and my mom was like, what? You left college for this job and now you're turning it down? Um, but all the representatives at the time said, you're, you're better off if you leave, and so glad now that they said that. But I start, I, then I en- enrolled in a Groundlings class. I said, yeah, I like that, this, I just don't know how to do it. That was the remarkable thing in, in going through the research was the amount of time you put in at Groundlings after Mad TV. Yeah. And, and not knowing anything that you just shared with us, my assumption would have been, why would you be on Mad TV if you hadn't been driving towards that? But it's kind of yeah. great to hear the... Never on my radar until an agent said, "Here or manager, here's what you need to do." Yeah. Um, let's pause for a moment to give a little more thanks to Mike Hitchcock, who we just saw at the Sketch Fest. I did um, one improv show. It's kind of like Ascat, where I was the monologist and he was with the group that was along where with you do the, theme uh, park. Mike, yeah. Theme, theme park. park. Yeah. Michael Higgins. Uh, Rachel Dratch. Rachel Dratch, who we love. Um, and the uh, is it Cole Stratton? <laughs> yes. Cole Stratton. And Janet Barney. And Janet Barney, two of the founders and of Sketch Fest. And there was one Fest. other female who I don't remember. How kind of you. But oh, Hitchcock yeah. uh, destroys. I think hot tits, right? Shall I she goes uh, by hot tits? Yeah. Hot tits <laughs> McGee. Hot tits <laughs> McGee. Um, and, and Michael Hitchcock is, is as enthusiastic and, oh, so and mad and carefree on stage as he was the first time he stepped on the boards at, yeah, at Groundlings. There's a great Michael Hitchcock story that happened in recent history, probably the last two years, he was in an improv at the Groundlings Theater. <laughs> and it's, they have a game, I think it's a one-man show, where it's like, this is, you're about to see a one-man show, give us a topic uh, of what his one-man show is about, and he's gonna make it all up. And I think it was Natural Disasters or something like that. And he's just so funny, and especially in that environment where he's just all the energy. But he's building, he plays an earthquake, and he plays an avalanche, and then he goes, look at me, I'm a tornado! And he spins and f- falls off the stage, <laughs> not intentionally. Into the audience? Into the audience. <laughs> falls and collapses into the lap and just keeps going. Sure. Because he's, he's Liza Minnelli at that he's point. The, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, uh, it was m- maybe top three funniest things <laughs> ever seen in my life. Oh, that's pretty great. Yeah. Um, all right, well, let's... Uh, We've had let's some. Let's end it. Let's, yeah. yeah, no, I, I can't take any more. No, I was going to say, uh, in terms of the Groundlings, you know, we've had some people from there pass through and talk about uh, Lisa Kudrow and and um, Love. It's come to mind. Um, Was Sherry O'Terry one? Yeah. 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 Oh, and he was on here too. Farrell? Well, some Farrell. girls. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Where was Lorraine from? 
Yep, Groundlings. Lorraine. She yeah. was the yeah only. Oh, um, LA yeah, yeah. Because I remember I was uh, not to name drop, but I was just talking to her last week, and yes, I Nobody. remember she was. Uh, oh, but San Francisco during Catch Fest. Yeah. yeah. She was saying that she's she's from here. Yeah. She's doing it here. Yeah. Uh, let's let's jump around, which I like to do. Please. Um, what's the real reason you didn't warn the world, or at least the United States, about Amanda Bynes? <laughs> Uh, I, I truly, you know, I was on the Amanda show, first job out of high school, Amanda yeah. show. Mm -hmm. Do you know Dan Schneider? Yeah, I'm going to say yes. Okay. He's, uh, he was on head of the class. He's created every Nickelodeon show from all that on, basically. Yeah. He's the emperor of Nickelodeon. Um, and he gave me my first gig out of high school, and, a man, you know, I'm 18, Amanda's 14, just this charming, sweet, lovely girl. Oh, no, Sammy's worked with her as well. Mm -hmm. He's done a motion picture with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I got to there. I had to earn that. Uh, I was unproven. I did not have the illustrious body of work. Uh, right. You know, critical darling, freaks and geeks under my belt. <laughs> sure. um, yeah. No. Yeah. So, so I ended up doing seven of those, and we became friends. And then did uh, Big Fat Liar. I played a bully in that, and we touched base. And then, and then she and I were close for for a number of years. And then fell out of touch. So I, I think our last conversation was when I was 21 or something. So right. I, I was saying to Sam before that at this point, no matter where she would ha had have landed, it'd just be like meeting somebody for the first time. I think because who you are at you know 17 and 21 and who you are at 31 and for everyone is, is for everyone involved completely completely different. Yeah. Uh, and the time I knew her. Nobody more charming, yeah. smarter. Yeah. Well, lovely, isn't that the heartbreak? Isn't it's, that it's the awful. heartbreak? It's awful. Of how wonderful she was. Yeah. Because there are a lot of people who end up being crazy who always were. Sure. Or not, you know, having yeah. having issues. It's a topic that, like, I I just don't know much about right. too. You right. know, and, yeah. and I also feel like, how much do you know of, of the specifics of the situation? But just from the photos and the stories and the headlines, you do see. Yeah, you just want. I, she's just. She I just, was at at one point in my life. She was one of my favorite people. Sure. So I, I, I hope it. I hope it's she's, all better now. She's going to be okay. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it seems to be a shock for just about everyone that was close to her or did work yeah. with her. You know, when Rip Torn holds up a bank in his pajamas at five in the morning, no one says what. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you saw there the writing was on the wall. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, now, is it possible that your 7,498 hours playing the Nintendo 64 game GoldenEye had contributed to um, the Illegitimate? Illegitimate. 100%. Yeah. 100%. These are just going to be random questions. Wait, right? so wait, that was the amount of hours you logged? 7,498. At least. Dude, you were so close to 10,000, you could have been an outlier. I'm not done. <laughs> I, have, I have a working Nintendo 64 in my New York apartment. And this, this, which the which one is yours, Jamie? The Retro one, or the original one? The original one. NES. The original NES. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah, my buddy Hunter, the, the guy group that comes, we install, we do Mario Kart 64 and GoldenEye. And Hunter Houston knows where you'll respawn in GoldenEye. If you play multiplayer, he knows on every level, when you're killed, the next place you'll respawn. So if he gets the golden gun and he kills you, it's the most infuriating thing. Because <laughs> your screen then becomes... <laughs> <laughs> just ten times in a row. That's it. It's awful. How much it's fun? impressive, but it's awful. How much fun for him, though? Oh, my God. He's a god. <laughs> He's a god. I know you will be back, and I know where it will be. <laughs> you can't beat that. Yeah. Also, in college, uh, when you weren't playing the GoldenEye, mm -hmm. the sloppy swish may have begun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that possible? Yeah, that's that's my go-to dance circle move. You sure. know what I mean? Like, oh, sure. and the... But you probably didn't think it would become... No. How could you have? In fact, oh. did it even dawn on you in the early phases of SNL? I mean, how soon into it did that come up? You know, uh, uh, third season? Right. Third season. You buried the lead. I know. <laughs> I should have broke with that. You well, know. yeah, I had, I had good luck with this stupid, like, behind-the-scenes video. Like, Robin was the musical guest, and I was like, who's Robin? And they played the music video for me, and I was immediately in love. And I was like, this is the most catchy thing. I had the, some of the crew before we went on. Watch uh, the Call of Your Girlfriend. Watch 
a couple minutes of the original video, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. you in the the pink sweater in, in the office, office yeah. with Bobby Moynihan with the flashlight, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, Vanessa Bayer, and uh, yeah, it, that was that was a very produced version of a bit I'd been doing that week, going into people's offices and like starting the song on their computer and dancing while they're trying to write <laughs> and driving people crazy. Well, that was my question because at one point towards the end of that video, mm -hmm. you do see a guy at the computer exactly, in the middle yeah. of your office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking, who is that guy and how do you reach that level of concentration? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That he's, he's unaffected by- Harvard, what? man. That's Harvard, man. <laughs> That's Harvard ed education. Yeah, no, that was great. It was Sarah Schneider, one of the writers, was like, you should just do that. You should film that video in your office. And at the time, I had like a, like maybe maybe 80 square feet of office, maybe. Sure. Um, and so I was like, that's great. And so at 4.30, I just went, will you do me a favor and come hold a flashlight? You know, will you do me a favor and come film this? And and uh, yeah, and, and, and then we shot that. I was like, oh, this is maybe a thing. Like if I were a fan, right. this is something I would love to see. Oh, yeah. So I uploaded it and... and uh, and that caught on, and that was kind of a, a little realization of what Andy and Yorma and Akiva did for that show. Sure. Like, yes, there were pre-taped pieces on the show, but in terms of bringing uh, like comedy pre-taped pieces into the new age of social media and technology, I mean, they changed the structure of the show. They yeah. really did, and bringing YouTube into that and yeah. watching videos the next day online. And they did that. Music being a huge component. Exactly right. right. Music videos not really a thing up until that point. You know, right. a, a few, but not really. Yeah. And now it's almost a staple, like like out of necessity. You know, just to just to keep the young viewers' eyes eyes engaged. Yeah. You could um, only hope to reach Dick in the Box. I, I, you, I don't think you can. I think that is. If, if I may. The brass ring. I don't think you should. Um. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a Dick in the Box guy. Come on, that's a sweet spot for me. I get it. That's a sweet spot. I get for it, me. and I tip my hat. Okay. Okay. Um, before um, the next round of questions, they're giving me a note that I should do the mid roll. Can I? Would you mind if I bang these out? Sure. All right. Cool. Yeah. Um, um, would you I'm mind doing it with, it with me? me? <laughs> Wait. Oh, you didn't want me to do it with you. I do. Oh, okay. I would prefer you to do it okay. with me. Yeah. I would prefer us to do it together. <laughs> to this camera. Ready? Yeah. We've got, We've got Spike's Spike Catch a Catch Contractor, Contractor sponsoring, sponsoring today's episode of the Kevin Bollock Chat, Chat Show. Show. Have you ever been <laughs> on? Oh my God. You aren't going to go as high on that. I'm sorry. Do you want to take it back? <laughs> Let's try it again. Okay. Have you ever been on? <laughs> And I really follow <laughs> teleprompters to the And so! <laughs> and we've got the show for you. If, if not, not, we've still got incredibly entertaining <laughs> show for you. That's Watch, what, so that's what you do with all caps? Yeah. Yeah, you gotta scream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's anger. Okay. There's and two the, emotions. Let me see how you play uh, in quotes. Centered in let anger. me see how you play in okay. quotes. Watch Catch a Contractor <laughs> on Spike, starring Adam Carolla as a master carpenter with a taste for vengeance. Okay, now let's do this next one as Brad Pitt. Okay. It starts with American <laughs> families who've been conned by low-down, dirty contractors. <laughs> Corolla and his team locate the cheapskates and bring them to face their mess. <laughs> <laughs> the contractors then get a choices. Give back money, come <laughs> back, fix the work. Or the homeowners will see them in court. Huh? <laughs> oh, fuck! <laughs> oh. Where do we go from here? Uh, catch, catch, I got a little Michael Sarah, just a little. Okay, okay. If it's possible. Just, just as these contractors are stumbling around trying, trying to defend their, their terrible work. Uh, Adam Braden and the families uh, to, to confront the, the dirt bags to rip them off, or you know maybe maybe just try to solve things amicably if, if at all possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'll, laugh, uh, you'll, you'll cry. Laugh, you'll re-examine your own you. haven. What? It's where it was. And comedy me. <laughs> <laughs> to make great, great television. Oh, Catch a Contractor starring Adam Carolla premieres uh, Sunday, February 28th at 10 or 9 central. Oh, 
in an all-new episode of Bar Rescue on Spike. I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, yeah. Takeshi Contractor now owes us ten times. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I, it's it's going to be difficult for them to make that right. Right. <laughs> it really is. The, it's going to. It's beyond. Right. Writing a check at this uh, point. No, right. they thought they were gonna get like a half-ass, like <laughs> sort of fame wait, wait, enthusiasm. Wait, 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 wait. half ass. <laughs> yeah, that's what they thought they were gonna yeah, get. Yeah, they thought at best they were gonna get like a. He'll be. Oh, oh no. Oh god. Was that your spit take? Oh god. <laughs> Oh, he wet himself. <laughs> he hurt his feelings so bad he wet himself. I throw water on the ground at that <laughs> suggestion. I'm just saying, not half ass, but just like a, eh, then you got your butt. Oh, so I do, but, normally do the reads in a monotone. Yeah. In a bored monotone. Yeah. Oh, let's check out this next one for square face. All right, very square well. Square space. Square space. <laughs> With your square face. Uh, all right, now you get to do the request. I do? Yeah. Okay. Uh... Who should, who should I read this as? Okay. Oh, great. Oh, great. Albert Brooks, okay. uh, Alan Arkin. Um, I love Arkin. I would love... Let's take a break that takes Thanks Squarespace, the all-in-one platform. Is this crazy? That makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. It's a great word, by the way, portfolio. For sponsoring today's show. Not the Today Show. Squarespace is constantly... Imp huh? Constantly improving their platform with new features, beautiful designs. Oh, honestly, when you look at the designs, there's only one word you could use to describe them, and that's beautiful. And all the style options, you need to create a website. I'm going to do my impression of it. Tailored to your needs and tastes. Plus, every Squarespace plan is now fully... I can't commit to it. The yelling with the all caps. <laughs> Oh, I gotta go. it takes a lot out of you. All right, I'm going to finish this and I'm going to lie down. To support commerce <laughs> functionality. By the way, a word I'm not fond of, functionality. It's too literal. <clears throat> that means that every single square foot... Let me just take over from here if I can, if you wouldn't mind, Alan. Peter! I can't move one eye and read Peter. the teleprompter. Oh, That's the only bad. problem. Squarespace customers can now begin selling products online, restaurant tours, artists, writers, or CEOs. Squarespace is here to power your next great idea, big or small. Start your free trial with no credit card required at squarespace.com. If you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code ARKIN. That's not true. Do not <laughs> use ARKIN. You'll get nothing for that. <laughs> Try Pollock, P-O-L-L-A-K, that little Jew shit who ripped me off. <laughs> Get 10% off to let them know that we sent you Squarespace, everything you need to create an exceptional website. You know that um, there's like people sitting in an office like, does he need to say Squarespace more? <laughs> <laughs> Can we pepper in Squarespace? I don't think 11 is enough. Four or five more times? Yeah. Maybe we use Squarespace as punctuation? <laughs> well, let me, yeah, as punctuation? <laughs> as qualifiers? <laughs> Um, I just lost my, my log. Oh, no worries. Uh, uh, okay, so let's go back in. Uh, oh, thank, thank, th thank you for that, by the way. Yeah, that, that was yeah. a little ridiculous. Um, and and uh, I'm going to watch it on a, on a continuous loop at the house for a while. <laughs> uh, had you done Brad, Brad Pitt prior to SNL? Was that yes. one you brought to the yeah, audition? Yeah, that was like, that was, I could tell that that could maybe be my meal ticket if people responded it, to it in the way that I, I did. Right. Um, yeah, that that's one that comes out of just wanting to be him. Sure. Just you know, the the run of seven, twelve monkeys fight club like that is was just every guy I feel around my age was Yeah. He wa he was kind of the dean for for our generation, I feel. You know, the, not to mention the first ever the Brando to do this with a gun. Is that true? In the movie California with a K. Is that? Yeah, I mean early. <laughs> So good. Oh, uh, what? What are you talking about? Well, you hurt my head. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, well, he was an old. That. He I was an old. In everything. Yeah, he really is exceptional, and he was an old prospector in California. You're right. Yeah, he was. He was <laughs> all right. Oh, um, um, <laughs> yeah. I want to take a nap. Yeah, twelve monkeys also oh just. Are you well, kidding me? That's where the buh comes from. It's like. You want to get out? You want to escape? That's sane. That's very sane. Buh. <laughs> I can help you, monkey. Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> it's really kind of uncanny. And also, with me, with Alan Arkin or, or um, <clears throat> Albert Brooks, especially with Albert Brooks, I give the example. Comedically, I think faster yeah. when I'm in his rhythms yes. than in my own. Absolutely. How weird is that? It's, to... I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, it's, a, it's an odd thing. Yeah. 
and you just want to live in their space a little while. Yeah, I think yeah. that's why it's great to hear you admired uh, Brad Pitt's work so much. That's why the impression sort of started. Yeah. Because that happened with me from the beginning, and I think it happens to this day. They'll say, well, why don't you do something? I don't, I don't really give a shit about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I think the best ones come out of how they do that. Uh, yeah. How they get away with that. You right. know what I mean? Right. Like, that's such a strong choice in that moment that I, if I tried to make in the most earnest, would people would laugh at. Yeah. People would laugh if I tried to, you know, do that in a thing. <laughs> but he fucking gets away with it. Yeah, or bastards. Holy yeah. fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Just Yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, I found it interesting in the, in the uh, dossier that you brought all of that to the first audition. Yes. They said, come back a uh, second time. You did, in your own words, a little more sweaty that yes. second time around, and then did not get the show, and then one year later got the phone call saying, oh, wait, maybe we do want to hire you. Yeah. Was that the longest year in time after getting that close anyways? Because it kind of seemed like when you talk about it previously, the sense was, I never thought in a million years that from being at Groundlings and being on a sketch and seeing on the, on the chalkboard or whatever backstage, oh, by the way, Lauren Michaels was in the audience, that it would lead to me getting flown out to audition for the show. So because that should have never ap actually happened, yeah. I had to wonder, was it as devastating as someone who their whole life was, this moment has to come and then it doesn't? Sure. Um, there, there's so many shades therein. Like, like by the time I left MAD, right. SNL became a possibility, but in an odd way, a smaller possibility because, oh, have I tainted the waters by doing mad. As everyone else before you had. Yeah, right. and, and, but I did it, so maybe why not? Right. But if, if it's ever gonna be reality, I need to know what the hell I'm doing. Oh. So that was Groundlings. And, and, and also at that time, because after Mad, it went back to conventional auditioning. And um, seven or eight years. Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. Long well, you can time. do, you know, level one, level two, back to back. You can bang those out pretty easy at Groundlings. And, right. And it's only four levels, but the wait for me between two and three was a year and a half, I think. And then between three and four was two plus years, mm -hmm. just to wait to get that class. Um, but once, once, in, like, once I was immersed into that process, that became sort of, you know, Valhalla for me. It was like SNL, that'd be the best. And, and I think I, I, the first show I ever got to see live, I got to see SNL live years before, was Andy and Bill's first episode. The season premiere of, of their first, uh, their, and they did like an update thing where it was like new guy impression off that was great. And for me it was like Hater was just clearly the guy because he did Pacino in that first episode. And it was like, how, how? He's he's the guy. What, did Andy do Nick Cage or wasn't ready yet? He, no, the the joke of the new guy impression off was that Bill was this master <laughs> and Andy was and, and, and so it was like you know, uh, is Peter O'Toole and you know and then Andy would be like, hey I'm Sylvester Stallone you know uh, I'm Rocky. Very, it was very funny. <laughs> right. Um, and and just that it's just those little moments where like hey I got in to see SNL. Maybe it is possible, right. and then seeing, knowing a little bit, and seeing Kristen get hired. Like I, I was around, like my friends who were in Sunday Company with Kristen at Groundlings. At Groundlings, right. and like seeing her go through the process of auditioning and getting it, and like, oh, it does happen for people in my circle. Yeah. Then there's also like, no way in hell. You know what I mean? Like, like there's just no way. So when Lauren came and saw the Sunday Company. We think he was there to look at Nassim, actually, because he, he did fly her out, um, and we knew that they were looking for girls at that time. Right. But he flew four of us out. So, yes, seeing Lauren was there on the board was kind of like, this is the moment you hope you get. Even with, gra even with doing Groundlings, there's no guarantee for that. Oh, no, there's thousands there's that thousands. never got close. Exactly, and, that, and there's, there's people in the main company, brilliant, talented performers, who just, in the cycle of SNL and the show and what they needed cast-wise, never got the opportunity to be seen. I don't think they wanted it. They I, mean, that, I, think, it I think that's actually the line. All right. Yeah, it wasn't the way life goes. It was they didn't want it. I'll tell them. Okay. Uh, so that that moment comes is a victory, and yeah. holy crap, and I don't know, and, and you can't help but go like, did he like what I did? Right. And he did. So and who did you throw down at the original audition? Um, I did I did eight or nine impressions. I did, I did Brad Pitt, 
I did Seth Rogen. I did Paul Giamatti and Dr. Claw having phone sex. I did <laughs> Jimmy <laughs> Fallon interviewing Tom Hanks. Um, so you're saying you also did Tom Hanks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I'm do. not sure I've seen Hanks. anyone do. No, it's I don't. Bad. It, it's not great. It's it's fun. It's enough. Um, Is it just the enthusiasm? Um, yeah, a hundred percent. It's like. <laughs> Oh my god, I can't believe it. Mr. Tom Hanks is here. So, so cool. I, you're like the biggest movie star in the world. I can't, can't, can't believe it. It's so funny. I, I, love, I love that movie uh, you did uh, about uh, the, the puzzles. Or what was that? <laughs> well, that was the Da Vinci Code! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is the it's rhythm. It's only that. Yeah. And I can't, like, I can't be conversational in it at all. Right. Just, well, come on! Get off the field! Wilson! <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty great. Yeah, so it was like nine. It was like all your A material, right? Sure. And I will say that first audition was like win or lose, I did it. Win yeah. or lose, I'm in the space. Lauren said you're worth taking a look at. Four of us went from Sunday Company. I rented a limo to pick us up at the airport. Of made course. like a, a playlist of like you know. Jay Z, Alicia Keys, New York, Frank Sinatra, you know, like we were just blasting it, driving through the Holland Tunnel, like hanging out of the sunroof. And it was a party, and it was just like so great, and just absorb it, because no matter what, yeah. wow. Yeah. Uh, so they fly into Newark then? Uh, you're right. Midtown <laughs> Tunnel. You're right. Just Midtown, saying. thank you. Okay. This has been Mr. Geography. <laughs> well, it's just uh, so right. the woods, bro. I'm still learning. I'm Spine a West Coast woods, guy, bro. dude. Again, uh, production notes. Yeah. Always correct the guess. Anytime. <laughs> wasn't correct the guess. Opportunity. I was asking you're right. if no, you're working it, out. You're working it out. He didn't say we flew into JFK and took the Holland Tunnel. You're so right. You're so right. And I do take the Holland. I do fly into Newark because we're All right. in Battery Park City. There you go. See? Thank you. And See? now I feel closer to you <laughs> than. Uh, Maybe anyone ever. Uh, no. Shall we You're take so right. this? I'm on your side. Thank, thank you. For that. No, thank you. No, thank you. Just, all right. It'll be a better version next time you take uh, it. So. That's all. That's all this is about. Take two. Yeah. <laughs> We're driving in a truck. God damn it. I said limo the first time, didn't I? Okay. Okay. Take it again. Um, yeah, it, and and it was a party, and and I and like and my pump up song is listening to you know lose yourself eight mile you know dun, dun, just like fully like I'm just gonna make this as dramatic and fun and everything I want it to be. Right. And I did great, and I got laughs, and I could tell it went well. And Lauren came up and shook my hand after the first one, and I was like, whatever happens, happens. You know, there's only so much, as you know, is, is that's in your control. A week or two later. They really liked you. I knew it. They want to fly you back in a week to do five new minutes of com completely new material. And I'm like, oh, come on. I You're only going to see the B team. That's all, I, that's all I can show you. I promise you I did not try to slow play it. Right. I promise you I put six and a half minutes together of what I thought was the best to, to show you. And also now it's so much more real. Right. Like not only are they looking at you? They're really looking at you. No, you're fucked. And I and so it went from like being in the dressing rooms the first time of like, wow, who sat here? And oh man, that <laughs> smells like Farley. What is this? And, you know, to like, okay, what did I do? How did, where did Coco goes from? It goes from Michael Sarah in the into the stupid Jamba Juice. I should be doing the Jamba Juice character. What am I doing? They're gonna hate that. I did a fucking musical guy the first time. This is not gonna like really in my head. Should have done that. And, and I totally should have done that. <laughs> Guys, listen. I already gave you my best up. I'm just gonna explain how I feel. Uh, I'm a human boy, and this is impossible. It's literally the. Did you audition? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I. I yeah. It's the hardest audition it's ever. Hellish. I mean, you'll appreciate. You know, you all the auditions you've done in your day. You're in the studio. You're on home base mark where the host says, thanks, you know, we got a great show, stick around. You're standing there. When you do the show, it's not that hard. When you do the show, it's filled with 300 people, crews are running oh, around, there's sets, there's energy, there's everything. This is, it's completely empty. Yeah. The lights, there's only one light on you, so the, it's freezing because the air conditioning hasn't been burned off by the other, you know, the rest of the grid. And there's a table, like a long picnic table with Lauren and Seth and Marcy, you know what I mean? It's like, it's us, it's here. You start talking and your voice is echoed back over the sound system because there's nothing buffering that or muffling the sound, you know, absorbing the, the sound waves. And it's awful, you feel so alone. You feel so like, 
oh, it's just me. And yeah. there's well, yeah. no material provided for me. This is just my stuff. You and know? you don't want to stop talking. You want everything to keep going just in exactly. case there's an opening and an empty moment which you simply can't not survive. Totally. And, you're, and, and me, what I did wrong that I changed for the third audition was they want to see, they got to get to know me. They want to see who I am. So in between, I'm going to be funny, I'm going to be charming, and like, thank you. That was weird. <laughs> and I uh, put my thing on. And, okay, I, I'm a nice guy. I'm really easy to work with. I never complain. I'll, I'll always, you know, I'll, I'll give you grace whenever you want. Uh, right. And the third time was like, so, so, so the second time, I feel I kind of psyched myself out a little bit, but they also did not need another white guy, you know, nor do we now, but at that time they had, you know, Jason, Will, Bill, Andy, you know, they had, they were set, they weren't looking for this type. Um, but even with that, we were told it's not, it's no, but not never, and you're on our radar and we really like him. So that was enough of a thing that was like, you know, good for me. Uh, I'll take it with a grain of salt because if I, you know, invest in that, I'll lose my mind and become a crazy person. Sure. But I had that concept to know I'm still at the Groundlings. I have another six months of Sunday Company. I was lucky enough to get into the main company. Now what I write, I'm going to really watch the show. And now what I write for myself, I'm really going to try to structure to that format. Yeah. And I had a year to do that. So, so time C was also a little bit in the most professional way possible. Fuck you. You've seen me. Here's what I can do. So right. it's like bit, hold for laugh because you should be laughing. Move on to the next thing. It was, and I, and I, you know, they have the server where you can watch all your auditions. And you can see the progression. Like the first one is just happy energy. And the second one is a little shaky and sweaty. And then the third one is like boom, boom, boom. And Lauren even said, you have a meeting with him. So I auditioned a week later. They flew me out to meet with Lauren. And he's like, you know, your audition was very good. Um, they were all good, but this was very precise, you know. And at the time, I was like, well, I thought the others were precise. But then you <laughs> sit there from his vantage point, and you're like, oh, he's absolutely right. Yeah. Um, and once you get into that world, mm -hmm. How about this? Because mm -hmm. uh, I realize we've had the former cast members on. We've not had the active. Yeah. Um, and if this is more water, by the way, I've got a beautiful yeah. Yeah, little backup here. Give you a little taste, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First one's free. Yeah. Um, if you can, we've heard fragmented bits and pieces. That's, by the way, those of you listening, not the water pouring, but me urinating. <laughs> um, uh, it's such a healthy stream. It really it? is. <laughs> I gotta yeah. tell you. In two water. It's yeah. not a big package. It's just a huge a, urethra. Yeah. <laughs> just like it, a. It's 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 less yeah, a horse stream. Like a horse throwing up. Just right. like loose skin yeah. around a very <laughs> firm pipe. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. Very short and stout pipe. I'm yeah, not yeah, proud. Yeah. yeah. But just wide yeah. opening. Um, what was as much as you can walk us through? Uh, you did a show last week. Uh, no, uh, two, we, weeks two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah. Just, if you wouldn't mind, because we've heard the fragment. Like, for example, in the research, I didn't know about the Tuesday night dinner with the host. Sure. So there's got to be, and I've, we've been students and fans of the show our entire life. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if, would you mind walking Not us through the week? No. Okay. Um, Monday, you'll get a text. Call time for pitch is usually around 4.30. Which you, means the guest, the guest host... The guest host is going to be in Lauren's office. All of the cast and the writers will, will file into Lauren's office on the 17th floor, mm -hmm. corner office, sit on the floor in couches and chairs, and then go around the room and pitch one or two one-line ideas. The real goal being make the room laugh, show the host we're thinking about them, put uh, a face to the name and voice, uh, and, and show, hey, this is going to be fun. This is going to be a fun time. And is there the hope that the guest host mm -hmm. is going to go, ooh, I like that? Uh, sometimes, sometimes. There's also, there's equally the fear that they'll do that. Like, this is a, such a ridiculous sketch and, like, would never work, but I want to say it because it'll make people laugh. Mm. And then it's like, I love that. And you're like, oh, I had a real idea I was going to work on and we're only allowed two and yeah. now I have to do this because it got endorsed by the host. So you learn pretty quick to be careful. You do. Yeah. You do. Um, it, yeah, Monday can, is, is such a, uh, an odd thing because it's equal parts stressful because you're surrounded with everybody. You're, in a way, performing for everybody, Which for all your peers. Which is quite rare that everyone's together. Exactly. And it means nothing, too. Really, like, when it comes down to it, what, what will be read on Wednesday is in no way reflected by what's said on Monday. Um, 
so it's a lot of it's much ado about nothing, you know. And you're also still pretty hungover from Saturday night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's only had 54 be, hours. Sure. That's not enough. For yeah. sure. No, it, and they'll go late. They'll go. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess there was a group that went two shows back, went till noon on Sunday, okay. hanging till noon on Sunday. Yeah, I, I, I could never. I, I made that mistake once. With did them. you? Yeah, you you hung and did the whole thing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it it throws off your schedule. It's it's like nothing else in so many ways, but um, but at very early, as you're getting out of there, four thirty five a.m. Just from the Saturday night dinner. Yeah, after exactly. Show, earliest is four. Yeah, yeah. earliest earliest. If I you're mean, putting saying, guys, time. I really got to get out of here. It's four oh five a.m. Exactly. If you're being the party pooper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So true. Yeah. So you go. You show up. If the call time's four thirty, you'll maybe show up at three thirty because you know people are already starting to plan writing appointments. So you'll go around, and if you haven't texted somebody of, hey, I'd like to do this this week, find time, and uh, you'll have to go in and be, what are you working on, and would you want to do something about this? And then there's topical, and that's basically for the writers, uh, but the cast, a lot of the cast sits in, and uh, up until. Now, Seth has led that, and hey guys, welcome back, a great show, I thought that was a good response. Hey, did you read that article about that? And hey, what about this thing in politics? That's crazy, and somebody should do something about that, and anybody see movies or TV shows, and kind of shoot the breeze. Then we go into pitch, we do pitch, then we come out. Some people start writing or trying to outline stuff Monday night. Uh, my personal process is to like kind of check in with people and try to sort of lay bare bones of what my Tuesday night will be and then maybe go out to dinner with people and hang out because a lot of it is, as Mr. Hank said, the hang. Uh, and then Tuesday for me is Tuesday's writing day. So I show up around 2 in the afternoon. I try to schedule anywhere from 2 to 3 appointments. And they need to be, for me, about 3 or 4 hours to really kind of get something done. And a sketch should be, if it's a commercial, it can be you know six or eight pages. If it's a sketch, it should be about 10, but not much longer than that. And you write from two in the afternoon. I write from two in the afternoon. And the average I go home is around 5 or 6 AM on Wednesday. Uh, Tuesday nights this season, I've, I'm lucky enough to be chosen for every host dinner. Uh, so lucky for it. Because um, it's a break from the writing? No, because it's not, yeah, yeah, it takes you, like, you're right, getting somewhere, and then at 8.30, like, host dinner. Um, and they bring in a dinner, too, around 7 for, on, on the 17th floor in the writer's room. But, uh, yeah, you go to the host dinner, it's always at the same place. And it's uh, Lauren and the, and the host and a couple people from the talent department and then five or six of the cast. Um, and, and you heard about these host dinners your first year. Yeah, I went to maybe maybe two or three my first year. Which is already remarkable because as new guy... I think they try to give everybody a little taste. Taste. Yeah, yeah I think they're like, hey, you know, right. this is what it's like and how are you going to fare? It, and it is that whole thing where nothing's ever said, but there's so much being communicated, right? you know, of, uh, oh, I, I feel like a victory is your first dinner. You're like... Uh, I, oh, actually, I read an article about that, and this happened, and this happened, and I found this funny about it, and the table laughs, and then you say nothing else. That's like a great job at that host dinner. <laughs> you killed at that host dinner. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and and, and uh, they're different. It's very much um, depends on who the host is and the type of person they are. Sometimes, if it's somebody familiar who's back, it's very relaxed, and people are having their own conversations. If it's Someone who's new and timid or a little quiet, it's very focused on them, and we're right. all trying to make them feel welcomed and excited. Then you go back, you write. You have to be back on Wednesday by around 2, 2.30 for the table read. Table read is the 40-odd sketches that have been written the nights previous. Um, While you stayed up till 6 a.m., we find out Wednesday at 2.30. Exactly, exactly right. So it's done in halves, like sketches 1 to 20. It's the first half. You take a 15-minute break, sketches 21 through 40, second half. And these are read? Read out loud. By the cast. A huge conference table. The cast sits around with Lauren and the host, and then the writers are around us. The production heads sit behind us, and we read through the sketches. And, uh, and for a lot of the cast who don't write, or all the cast write? Everybody writes. Everybody writes. But and still, you're seeing sketches that you've never seen before that other people wrote you into. Exactly right, yeah. And, and you can go in a little earlier, as I do, and like it's all on the server, and you can kind of scrim. And so it's like, not oh, a cold read. Yeah, yeah, I have to play Joe Buck. Let me look up what Joe Buck's like. and um, That sort of thing. But it is, yeah, it's coldish. 
Um, and then from that, Lauren goes into his office and looks it over and then brings in the producers and the head writer and then brings in the host and they discuss. And then you'll, you hang out, the cast and writers will all go to their offices and hang out and like, God damn it, my sketch didn't play. Or hey, that was hilarious. They better pick that. Or like, Well, that's why I asked about the cold read because yeah. a lot of the people who stayed up till 6 a.m. are mm -hmm. counting on other cast members who've not seen the sketch yet. Yes to hit the ball just as deep as the people in the room sure. who wrote it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it seems like you, it is quite precarious in terms of how important it is to score at that Wednesday read yeah. before Lauren and everyone gathers in the room Yes, afterwards. there's there's Kind of have one shot at it the first time, and yeah. then you just keep, the rule is the rule. If it doesn't get through, try to get in a couple of weeks. If it played well enough, maybe you can tweak it and add some new jokes to surprise the room. Mm -hmm. If it bombed, forget it. Let it go. You should. I'm that way. Even even if it doesn't get picked, it's rare that I'll bring something back. I'm kind of like, all right, fine, leave it, move on. Um, but if it bombed, you better do some major retooling. Um, but like, you could get a laugh. Like, if the voice gets a laugh and then the sketch goes nowhere, you're like, okay, people like that character. I need to find a different setting or, or right. scenario. Um, and what, how about the feeling of the first sketch you worked on that first year? that went through that Wednesday read and made it to the dress? So my first sketch I ever got on was like my fourth episode with Emma Stone, and it was the French dance thing, and that was what I was performing when Lauren came to Sunday Company. That's what he saw. Yeah, that was something you were already doing. Yeah. So that was pretty cozy and comfortable. Yeah, but, but it was a really great kind of like the stars aligned with Emma being huge SNL fan, excited to be there, and I'm like, hey, I'm new, and her being very empathetic to that and saying like, yeah, what do you need me to do? And like, will you rehearse this dance with me? And she's like, totally. Um, and that was like a good moment because that's most, most things that play at the table are things that you can sit and read out loud and people will laugh. Right. So it's mostly jokes. And that's a very physical visual thing. So I got up and a first time host who's, you know, she's 19, 20 at the time maybe. And this is a Wednesday. Wednesday with everybody staring at you with, you know, she, she, took, a, she took a leap of faith with me and it paid off and, and, and went pretty well. Um, Cause I could tell it, it was something that she would maybe be into. Um, but that was, on, if I'm honest, probably me knowing that there's not a lot of physicality on the show right now and this is something that I can kind of lick and put my stamp on that will be like, oh, that's Terrence thing. Because I have, I have pretty good unique impressions, and then if I do physical, big production things. That is the thing, by the way, how astute, because it is the thing, you, and, and when I think about Will Ferrell, mm -hmm. I think initially what set him apart in watching that documentary recently was the cheerleaders was the first thing, and that couldn't have been more physical. Yeah. Where he really got, was like, whoa, what's, what is this? Yeah. And uh, how astute to make that decision. Oh, the physical thing. Yeah. It's lacking. Astute-ish in that it, it is of me. You know what I mean? It's not like I was like, I need to learn it. It's like, this is kind of what I do anyway. This is what I like to do. I think I can do right. a, f a few of the things in different forms that people are doing, but certainly not any better than them. So this is a, something that will be mine. This can be my little plot of land. And... Um, that, and then like I got the, the uh, animatronic thing on, the Maryville thing when Jim Carrey hosted, which was like, he's like yeah. my, my hero. My brother uh, and I watched SNL every week, and yeah. when that sketch aired, I remember he called me the next day, he was like, who's that new guy, Taron? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was great in that animatronic thing. And I was like, yeah, I know. Yeah. He's phenomenal. Oh, thanks. He it, was stonky and or blitz. Right. I, I, I want to say stonky. I want to say, <laughs> I I say it stonky. too. <laughs> I want to say that. Will you let me say that? I, I booked stonky. Yes, you did. Mm -hmm. Um, that moment. I mean, that's that's like an SNL. That's that's captured in time. I did a Brasky this season. Ching! Yeah. That's in 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 amber and yeah. millions of years from now, <laughs> you know, Doctor Hammond will pull that out and recreate. You know, <laughs> Terrence SNL land. Yeah. You know, Doctor kill him park. And he will spare no expense. He will None. spare no expense. None. <laughs> Uh, that's like it's a physical thing. If you've seen it, we're like animatronics that are maybe like cursed or possessed. And uh, and it's my hero, Jim Carrey. Like is my hero. I, I like, I was the mask for Halloween. I was the, the Riddler. I was Ace Ventura. You know what I mean? Like he was the guy. Yeah. That's the first on the playground. Alrighty then, and everybody laughs. Yeah. And like Taron does it the best. You know, like that's <laughs> yeah. he, he was the guy. Sure. Um, that was like mine. So now I'm here, and he, this thing gets picked, and it's a physical thing with Jim Carrey. 
and uh, and I have the best time rehearsing it because you're locked in place and how much you know padding can, how many how much can you rework this yeah. you know like moving like a robot. Um, so it goes up at dress. Bill's to my right. Love and respect Bill. Jim's to my left. We're, we're like hunkered down under this like plywood wall, like three foot wall. And like, yeah, so how does it go? We come up, we do that. Yeah, and then I grab her. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And we come up and we do the first one and we do it. And then we, and then after, as we do it, you can tell the audience is so into it. Big laughs. We lower back down, applause break. And now it's like, I'm hunched down <laughs> behind a wall on in 8H as a cast member on SNL, people are applauding for the sketch I wrote. Look over at Bill, he's like, it's killing me, that's awesome. <laughs> Look over at Jim Carrey, and he's like, you know, way to go. And it's like, that, like. Take me now. Yeah. 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 I mean, it doesn't, it, that, that's such a great example of opportunity, the work, mm -hmm. the, the meeting your hero, not a disappointment, making him proud, getting to work side by side. It's all of those things that's the yeah. best of what that show could possibly offer. Exactly. Holy shit. Yeah. That's pretty fucking sweet. Pretty yeah. Good. Um, but also in the dossier, it showed how much of a fan of the show you were, how, how uh, literally up life. to speed on every single aspect, like the rest of us who are just straight up fans that have seen every interview and... and well, you'll appreciate this then. I just, just this last week, the Melissa McCarthy show on Thursday, sat down with Jim Miller for the updating of Live from New York. Oh, wow. And I walked, I, like, I got that email and I was like, what? <laughs> And I walked in, and and uh, he was like in the green room, and he's like, "Hey, thank you for doing this." I was like, "Man, I have read your book so many times on so many different toilets, and that is the greatest compliment I can give you." <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just uh, just a, a student of it, and and for me, it was uh, Eddie Murphy's Best of. Like that was my, hmm. I want to watch that again. That was that was my first. Uh, relationship with the show yeah and then and then uh, awareness from love it's on right well i mean those of us who watch the show and watch someone like yourself break out we want to instantly think this was a perfect fit this was yeah. opportunity meeting all of the preparation possible yeah yeah um and then then to find out in the dossier that you had you had the setback also of hey, you're on a radar. You didn't not this year, kid. Mm -hmm. Just adds to the whole thing. And then how you settled in being the new guy, yeah. and that that this happened on the fourth show. You mm -hmm. just I mean that's all also yeah. part of this sort of masterful. But prior to that, your then girlfriend is on a hugely successful television show. Yes, and. You guys are together how long before you get the official call that you're moving to New York? Yeah, so when I, when I got it... 2010. We, we were together for five or six years at that point. Yeah. So this is one of those yeah. life discussions. And the beauty of that situation, of what could be seen as a setback, is we now have a year to discuss how would we execute on this. Right to let it soak into our bones, to be aware of the concept. If I get this, there's no way I'm saying no. You have to be here in LA contractually. So I'm gonna be flying back and forth and what's that gonna mean for us and, right. and for our family. And, um, and she's three weeks on, one week off, and so are you? She's consistent, we're a little more warped. We'll do like two on, three off, or three on, one off, two on, two off. You right. know? Um, and of course, they don't tell you in advance. Yeah, you maybe you maybe know a few months in advance. Right. Yeah, but you know basically from September to May, you're you're you're, you're doing the season. Right. Um, yeah, it, everything about my career, and and I and I would not change a thing, has kind of been this. You know what I mean? Every now and then a little bump or a little dip, but it's just steady enough. There was nothing overnight about me. There was nothing, you know, I, I've been around the industry. I've seen people explode overnight. I've seen people, you know, disappear sure. into oblivion. I've seen it. I've seen a lot enough mm. in my 31 years to be beyond grateful, beyond appreciative for every moment and yeah. soak it in and, and as best you can, especially in a chaotic environment like SNL, try to compose yourself and try to be like... Also considering you're still technically in the pocket. Yeah, no, I mean, well, this is, this is my beginning in a way, right? Yeah. My first audition was when I was five years old, and at 31, it's like I can feel this season is kind of like 
I have the respect <sighs> of the show. Right. Now I'm writing for fun as opposed to writing for what will get on. Also the passing, as it were, of the torch or yeah. baton from Certainly. Bill and from Sudeikis Jason, and from yeah. Kristen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and new guys, six new people added, and then another yeah. one yeah. who are now looking to you as... Yeah, I guess. I guess. When I'm, I, well, I'm, trying, I'm trying my best to kind of embrace that and not go, no, I, no, don't look at me, no. Because you have there to is embrace. a reality of, of that in that it's Keenan, now it's Keenan, Bobby, Nassim, me, Vanessa J. You know what I mean? And, and then in that and in the role I play on the show, um, I have the ability to set an example and set a tone of how sure. to behave and how to go through the process as best as possible. And so I'm, I'm trying to own that. That's not in my nature, right. but I'm trying to. That's why it was so surprising to see in the dossier how mean and despicable you are to the new people. And so is that for you just fun? <laughs> is that just funny? C cite me examples. <laughs> well, I will not. Thing, I plead the fifth. I will not incriminate that whole myself. thing. How you you tricked Beck Bennett into thinking he was going to do uh, a musical show in, in D.C. and then you sold him into slavery. Yeah, right, right, right. That I see was what's happening fucked now. Fucked up, Darren. Okay, no, I see what's that happening. You're confusing my very prestigious, hot film career <laughs> with my respectable SNL <laughs> SNL resume. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, uh, you, you brought up uh, your documentary about being, do you have to be miserable to be funny? I, I don't consider myself to be miserable. I've, I had a, I've had a really great life, uh, and I think I'm a pretty nice guy. Of course, I feel like I'm always <laughs> concerned if I have to say that, <laughs> you know? Um, but no, uh, I, am I insecure? Absolutely. Do I get down on myself? Definitely. I, there's doubt. Then there's also huge ego, and I want to be the best, and I want people to think I'm great. Um, but I, I think I'm able to keep them in check. And, and what's most important, I feel, especially being on SNL and, and being in a generation where nobody is on the show who wasn't born after the show was created. So almost wow. everybody who's on it is a fan. Sure. Uh, Grew up with it. There's no reason we shouldn't at least try to find a moment a week to be like, holy crap yeah how cool is this right you know um and and a lot of my favorite comedy is victimless is silly is nonsensical i'm like right. I'm a huge conan guy for that reason you know he says the will ferrell comes thing. to mind just just everybody can enjoy right. or not, you know and and i definitely have strong opinions you know eddie redmayne um included <laughs> uh but I, but I more enjoy when everybody can enjoy it and kind of the tearing down and, and, and there's a place for that. And, I, and when that's done well, when it's sort of like that surgical, like yeah. cutting right where you're supposed to, there's nothing that'll make me laugh harder. But for the most part, I, I, I hope to keep this era as it seems to be a very positive, happy, supportive environment, as much as it can be right. in that environment. Right. Um, all the more reason to start discussing an exit strategy. <laughs> Let's go. From the show. What do you got? Is what this, do you got for me? Is this me? year four? I, I, can, I be, can I be your third? <laughs> uh, uh, is, no, 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 no. No, I'm not saying, words. I'm not mm. even beginning to suggest where you should go. Okay. But I think it's important to start talking about when you're leaving the show. <laughs> um, I just got here, please. I don't mean this show. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean SNL. No, we've got another hour and a half. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> I, I gotta beat Hanks. I gotta beat him. Yeah. Well, we'll see about that. <laughs> um, People want to listen to me more than Tom Hanks, right? <laughs> uh, it's got to be because um, I, 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 we do this thing every year in uh, Kansas City where Sudeikis is from, mm -hmm. um, along with uh, Rob Riggle, Riggle and, and uh, Paul, Paul Rudd. Rudd. Stone Street. And, it, and, and this last one, and Ham, yeah, and this last one was right before uh, Sudeikis announced. No, wow. Uh, yeah, and, it, was, it was one of those things where when we asked him, he was like, yeah, I, I thought it was clear, but I guess I have to make some sort of formal announcement. Well, because Kristen's last show was a... Yeah, was a, Leave No Doubts. Yeah. 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 And uh, it, it, it has a little bit of the, the firm to it mm -hmm. in that no one actually gets out. Right. Um, great movie, great cast. Sure. <laughs> um, but it seems to me when you're when you've gone through the phases that you have and you're yeah. in the middle of yeah. it, if it's year four, 
Um, there are people who didn't Phil Hartman do twelve and didn't. I think Hammond. Hammond is one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Hammond is the and long, like Meadows fourteen. Was the, Meadows was the next one. Next one, yes. uh, Kevin Nealon was on a Seth. long time. Oh, oh, uh, Daryl has it the most, and then yeah. Seth though. Seth, yeah, Seth. Yeah, Seth's he's been there a while. Who is the new showrunner? In absence of set uh, or head two, writer, two the co co head writers yeah, are Colin Jost, who's taking over over for update. That's who it was. And Rob Klein. Rob Klein. Yeah. Um, so Sophie's choice. One of them has to die. What are you going to do? Colin Jost. Sure, he's gone. Take him. Yeah, take him sooner. Take my girl. Take my girl. <laughs> um, you were once, I want to jump around a little bit. You were once asked to describe what makes someone a New Yorker because until SNL, you hadn't. Right. Uh, by listing the following someone who complains about noise, weather, limited space, being around people, and wouldn't live anywhere else. Now that you've been there a while, yeah. Are you, is there an update? No. What makes somebody a New Yorker? Those it are the things? That feels right. Yeah. That feels pretty good. I, I also, like, I don't know. You know, I, I'm, I haven't lived in New York for the last three and a half years right. and, and will only start living there full time next season. When your family moves out. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So that, that's exciting. And that worked out pretty, uh, pretty perfectly as well in trying to get comfortable and not feeling the pressure to say yes to every hang, every uh, event, everything. You know, now yeah. that I'm kind of you know, pretty comfortable in the show, as, I think as comfortable as you can be, um, my family will be there and it'll be easier to be like, no, I'm going home and I'm going to see the wife. Yeah. Um, Speaking of, how about how about that? How about our meeting, which was so awesome for me? Well, this is one of the things I wanted to ask. You're yeah. guest starring on the show. Oh, on her show? On her show. I am. I just finished this past week. Yeah. Or did you I mean lost. meeting me? Meeting you? Yeah. I mean meeting you. Oh, stop. forget her. I hate it when the guest brings death, it back around death to do me. Death part. Yeah. Um, it was on the street when the two of you were together in that lived, odd moment because it must have been. We lived on. It was. I think it was my first season. It yeah. may it may have been my second. I think it was your first. I think it was my first because yeah. we lived at 54th and 7th when I moved there because I didn't know any better and I could walk to work, which was great. And you well, must have been going to or coming from Caroline's, I would, I would presume. Were you staying at the London Hotel? We were kitty corner to and the 7th? London. We, yeah, we were kitty corner, kitty, kitty corner to it in, 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 a, the, uh, in the apartment building. That's there. where I was Southwest coming corner. from. Oh, really? Coming yeah. from the London? Well, like, we're walking down. I think we're going to a Broadway show, and Kobe gets recognized, as she does. Very, and her fans are always the nicest. That's been the great thing about How I Met Your Mother is that it's like just this, just a nice show with nice people, like with a nice eight million people who like it. Yeah. Um, and everybody who comes up is like, I don't mean to bother you. I just want to say I love the show. So right. it's always that. And, and she was having a moment of that. And like, do you mind taking a picture? And like, sure. And I hold the purse. <laughs> up comes Kevin Pollack, who I love, and literally grabs my arm and says, you're a genius. And I was like, ditto. <laughs> That's yeah. all I can say. And then you like keep up the great work and walked off. And yeah. it's just the coolest. It was your first season for sure. It was the coolest moment. Yeah. It was so awesome. <laughs> well, I'm sure it was. I yeah. wish I could return the compliment. <laughs> I remember it, it being felt like awkward. a half two for you. <laughs> I, I thought obligatory. I, I thought I'm going to throw this kid it. a bone and keep moving. <laughs> no, listen. You know, um, uh, I, I, I'm glad for whatever that moment was. Yeah. Um, it was a surprise because you just New York is one of those towns where you could see, you know, the president of the United States walking next to a homeless guy. It's just everyone's, you know, it's like the back lot of Warner Brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's a, an sure. alien walking with a centurion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to the commissary. Right. Um, so it was more of the just explosion of what the fuck the two of you just happened to be there. Yeah, yeah. But in terms of you uh, uh, in a potentially more impactful meeting, being a guest star on her show, mm -hmm. um, and then... Um, Getting yourself some? No, man. I've been hit, I've been plowing that <laughs> for since 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 before the se the series got picked up. I see. Yeah. Yes. Uh, nice, no. bro. Up high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. No. The, I got a guest star be, being her dude. Uh, that it was a nice like I, I'm out of work and they kind of throwed me a bone. Oh, so you guys were um, together beforehand? Yes. Yeah. I was also not in the dossier. I um, had shot a pilot that year called Nobody's Watching. 
created by Bill Lawrence. Who went on to do Scrubs. He's, he scrubs Cougar Town, doing yeah. all that good stuff. And that's the other thing in here, uh, which we'll get to, was how that becomes then a web series. Yeah, uh, that's a, that was, that was is, weird. That was a yeah. weird thing. Um, but yeah, Bill and, and uh, uh, Neil Goldman, Garrett Donovan, who've, who've worked on Scrubs, and then they worked on Family Guy. They've done a bunch of great stuff. They ran Community for a while. Um, and I shot that. There were two leads, myself and a fellow actor who was a Canadian gentleman uh, and a very good friend of Kobe Smulders and invited her, our pilot. It was such a crazy, great, I was, I was really excited about it. It was one of the few times where I read the pilot and I was like, this is the one I hope I get. And it happened. But it was half single cam, half multi-cam. Con the concept was a, re it was a reality show, but it was a scripted show. Mm. It's very meta. Um, and so he invited her to the live taping. She was there, and I guess we met that night. Mm -hmm. I, ah, I don't remember. That's my favorite response. Uh -oh. I, I seem to recall, if uh -oh. you insist. It's you know, it's like a pilot taping live, and everybody's coming up and going, "Great job, great job, great job," which right. is very nice. Yeah. Um, and you're not even listening when you're saying, "Nice to meet you." Yeah, I'm well, exactly. I'm like, "Oh man, did I? Did they get that? Did they really get that scene? I feel like I could have right. done that better. Is this show gonna be it? Is yeah. this gonna be the break?" Um, and then a month later at a birthday party, my friend Paul Campbell, who introduced us and was, was the co-star with me. The Canadian said, fella? Canadian fella. Before mentioned. Exactly. He said, uh, come to this birthday party. It's the last time we can hang before I go back to Vancouver. And I went to the birthday party and met this beautiful, lovely woman named Kobe. And uh, she was, it was very, it was pretty immediate. It was like clear that this is maybe going to be a thing. And it was sort of passively flirtatious. Sure. Um, through other people where you're talking and like, oh, yeah. And I'm sure you must. Like, you seem like a really pretty person. <laughs> you, know, you seem like you could have been a model. You, too, have a normal yeah, name. Yeah, but she, yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, you're, you're free. How was that? Um, and then her saying, you know, uh, oh, I shot this pilot. And she chimed me in. Like, yeah, he was so great in it. He's so funny. And then that night, let's exchange numbers. And she's like, yeah, well, I'm, I got this pilot that shoots next week. Like, oh, good luck with that. Um, do you want to go out sometime? And we kind of, we kind of set up our date for the, that Monday night, which was the night after the table read for How I Met Your Mother's pilot episode. So she did the pilot episode table read. Um, we went on our first date. Went very well. Hello. Is the uh, caller there? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And then, and she's like, I, this is a thing. I like you. I'm shooting this pilot. It's important. I want to be able to focus on it. So don't feel like I'm blowing you off if you don't hear from me the rest of the week. Totally understand. The next day, hey, I got off early. Do you want to hang? And we hung out every night that week. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, so like that first date. And then this past week just did my final guest star on the, on the show. Right. The third to last episode. And happened to be in town for the final table read because the last two are one episode that will right. air as an hour. And oh man, yeah. that was emotional. Yeah. That was crazy. Just the, the room, just everybody. Like the ambient noise was... <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah. that's room tone. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy, nine years. Yeah. And it has been this sort of, this structure for our lives together. You know, like if we were in school, we know where we're going to have to be in August. She starts in August and then to March. And we know we can have a vacation around here. And, and now that's done. And, and fortunately, we're going into another structure, which is now my show. But uh, it's been our family. It's been, it's been our extended family. And, and uh it's so not just a, it, because it's such a sweet, it's like the little show that could, it got better and better and better. And, I'm peop, and I know like people in my circle are like, wow, nine years, it's been on that long? Oh man, well that's great, way to go. But I'm like, no, it's so much more than that. <laughs> it's our lives together, don't you understand? We'll never be on stage 22 again. Do you understand? Crafty's closing shop. Crafty's gone. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it's significant. So we're de we're dealing with that. It's a big, big. No tension. one will understand. No, no, absolutely not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, well, she must be excited, and as as you both must be excited about the new venture, because for the rest of us who have sort of been uh, fans of. of of you're both as a, but also you want couples to do well when they're struggling, yeah. struggling, and then hitting the mark just so well. Her with her show, you with yours. You know, we don't know you, but we want the best for you. Oh, thanks. There's thanks. something weird about show business couples that when you like both yeah. of them, yeah, you just want everything to work. Yeah, and it never does. <laughs> it just We're never doomed. does. We're doomed. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I, no, I mean. 
listen, it, 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 it does every now and then. Yeah. Kevin Bacon and Kara Sedgwick, a great yeah. example. Yeah. Um, Kurt and Goldie. Kurt and Goldie. Tom and Rita. Let's just name them all. You know? <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be at least 1,700 um, more. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Lonnie. Um, my, to who? What? Bert, yeah. no? yeah, Bert yeah. and don't Lonnie? Tell him, don't tell him, don't tell him. <laughs> um, my wife is the kindest, most selfless, wonderful, funny, goofy, fucking hot person I've ever met. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and, and so I, f I feel good about it. I feel good about it. <laughs> yeah. Never, never say never, but I, I think it's a... It's yeah, a, a no, real. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm not pointing out, uh, do you realize how sure. ridiculous this is and it's over tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're in the pocket of the show mm -hmm. and of life. It's and, a good time, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great time. And, yeah. and, we, and we've also, we did it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we did four what? years of being on the other side of the country from each other. And so. you can't help but, uh, as a observer or you know, assume life just will continue to dole out the disappointments because that's what life is. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be those frustrations mm -hmm. when you're under the same roof, let alone on opposite ends of the country. Yeah. And, and all you can do is be on that phone. Um, yes. I'm sure you guys just text your love to each other. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure you don't actually... We were born in 82. Get on the phone. You know. Um, but yeah, there's got to be a sense of, holy shit, Whatever the worst part of our difficult nature of maintaining two lives and careers on opposite ends of the country, yeah, at least that part, we succeeded somehow. I mean, absolutely. That, yeah, you can't fuck it up now. I know. If you do, it's on you. Challenge accepted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nobody tells me I can't. <laughs> um, uh, how much fun is it for you and Paul to go on Comedy Bang Bang? We we love the Comedy Bang Bang and oh, devoted awesome. to it. Listening to a, a moment of it a little earlier today. We may or may not be involved with Earwolf. Just yeah, they may, sure, they sure. may in fact be our. The wolf dead. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been a Bang Bang fan myself for a long time. So when Scott asked me to do it originally, uh, I said yes, please, and and knew that Paul was around and, and suggested him because Paul Britton is one of the funniest people I've ever met. He's uh, he and I got hired together. We shared an office for the first season. And uh, yeah, and it, I, th I think I can speak for him and say there's mutual love, or he's just a great, great actor. Sure, I'm sure both are um, true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we all have our highs and lows, but uh, he, he is, uh, he just, yeah, tickles my funny bone. Yeah. Uh, Paul, and so. But the two of you together, also, the chemistry there is pretty amazing. Um, he was involved in a sketch uh, that recurred. Once, maybe twice. Windermere? The uh, Kings of Catchphrase comedy. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. That for Jamie. And there's a third one that didn't air, and I'm very familiar with that one, too. Yeah, there yeah. was one at the table read most recently that didn't get picked, like a final send-off for Seth. That was pretty great, too. Um, they're, they're pretty great. Funky boy! <laughs> I got them quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what's the I ask In for? In these shoes? I ask for uh, um, his character, Paul's character in particular. Yes. What is it I ask for? A... I go to your Sonic restaurant, I ask her for Kosheki. They say the washroom is that way. Oh, funky boy. I just heard the whole thing. I know all of them. Yeah. Yeah, Seth did the Boston. Uh, uh, Boston, yeah, Boston, 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 Boston Powers. Yeah. yeah. Do I make you honey, baby? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's really fun. Yeah, that's, that's uh, I think it's Bobby, Paul, and Na uh, Christine Nangle wrote the first one of those. And then variations of that coupling ever since. Um, he's so funny. He's so funny and in such a great kind of like subtle way too, you know. I, I don't know if you remember his Sex Ed Vincent no. the old video that he did. It's so great. Like he's like a, basically giving uh, an orientation on sex consultation. Sure. He's like, yeah, I'll teach you about sex. But he's, you know, very, very bad at it <laughs> as seems to be the very loose premise of every sketch on SNL ever. Right. Um, this person's bad at this thing. Uh, it's it's worth looking at, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I mentioned beforehand about uh, getting Jenny Slate for the for the documentary it was pretty great, and she talked yeah. a lot about 
that dream coming true and getting SNL and for her instantly knowing this is a bad fit and then ultimately getting fired from the show and what it meant to her to get fired and how it became this wonderful springboard to better stuff that yeah. she felt she was so much more suited at doing. So when you do share an office like that with Paul mm -hmm. and you're coming in at the same time yeah, and you stay and he doesn't, um, does it just help you realize how, how, how rare it is for things to go correctly? Mm -hmm. Because it seems like for every great story, there are 17 of, it should have worked the same way for this person. Yes. Yeah, definitely. I, I, there's, there was so much selfishly to take away from Paul's situation. Um, I, I think, well, one, I, it was a surprise. It was genuinely a surprise to me. I was, I, and still kind of don't feel that it was the right decision. Right. Um, because at that time, he'd really started to get, he had like a recurring, this recurring character, Lord Windermere, and he was starting to be integrated more, you know, and, uh, and I just think he is a unique voice in common, and a strong, unique voice, which is a, a precious, precious thing. Um, Especially on that show. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and so, very hard, because there's definitely like this, a sibling bond with the people you come in with. Yeah. Like Vanessa and Jay very much feel like my siblings, like family. Um, so all I can speak for is, is my side of it. I would imagine it was probably pretty hard on Paul's side. Um, so it was sad, it was heartbreaking, it made me very angry at the show. Yeah. Me, I got real angry, like, I don't even, what, what's the fucking point then? What's the yeah. point? Right. They don't even know, see, you know, it was a lot of that. Um, some survival guilt. Um, and, and then also, sort of relief like oh Paul's one of the funniest people I've ever met and if this show is not keeping him it doesn't mean I'm not funny if I don't make it on the show you right. know what I mean it was it was that realization of like oh the show has a type and has its needs and and is subjective as is any form of yeah. comedy yeah and if I get fired better people than me have been fired from this show yeah yeah oh yeah no, I, I could say that's absolutely true. In fact, we should go down that list right Great. now, Give it too. To me. Yeah, no, These please. are the people Plot that me. are better than you that were fired. <laughs> Terry Sweeney. Terry Sweeney. Yes, thank uh, you. Danny Dillon. Yes, Danny Dillon. thank you. Well, that whole season, besides, like, Lovitz was in... Uh, Chris Rock. Sure. RDJ. Yep. Uh, RDJ. Chris Michael. Rock. Janine Garofalo. Uh, yeah. G Godfried. Well, listen, I mean, technically, I think Sandler, Farley, and all those guys were let go before <laughs> they absolutely were contract. let go. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's crazy. It doesn't just work out grateful. for him. Yeah. Yeah. Also, it just seems like an amazing university. It seems like everyone yes. that's come out of there comes out of there. Mm -hmm. So whether it's leaving prematurely or at the end of staying too long at yeah. the dance, there's there's... You know, it's, it turns out it's just an incredible place for an education. Definitely. Um, and for a lot of graduating uh, alumni, they speak of it as this amazing moment in time. And it seems like the people who have come here that are former cast members say, you know, if you had any message for people who are active members, is be present. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been various phases where the cast members were, oh, you, did, you did a movie in the... In the hiatus? Oh, yeah, yeah me, right. me too, me too. Yeah. You know, that stuff. Sure. Uh, and one of the things in the dossier that you spoke to, which I, well, I, I found it refreshing because I hadn't heard much of it, was being a fan of the show, you always heard about this competitive cesspool. Yes. And how Lauren was a genius at get competing, uh, getting people to compete against each other as a way to bring out the, the best in them. And while that may be true in a lot of cases, it's obviously not true for everyone. Yeah. And that your experience thus far has, has not been in this competitive cesspool. Sure, everyone is competitive with themselves to get mm -hmm. the best possible on the show. Yes. And, as you mentioned, 40 sketches on Wednesday. Yeah. How many end up being in the show? Eight get produced, I think. Like, at, on the live show, you see about eight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty remarkable. Yeah. yeah it's it's almost a fluke when something gets through. Yes. And then from dress to the live another, also. And another, yeah, three or four get cut. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so like 12 to 14 are picked to be produced, and then, and then about eight survive, seven or eight. It also seems like some cast members, if not all, in their first year at least, have to go through literally not being written into three or four shows in a row. Yeah. Did you have that phase? 
I did. I definitely did. I I started that way. I like my first show. I think I had like a one line as as the JetBlue flight attendant, sure. which was the story that week. I think we all remember that. Um, and then had, I would say I maybe had two shows that first season where I like was only in the Good Nights. Maybe maybe only one, something like that. I think they always try to pepper you in somewhere if if that's the case. But the best lesson in that for me was one of those weeks where I had nothing. There's a knock at my dressing room door, and Fred Armisen comes in. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm not really in anything this week either. And I'm like, eh, you're Fred Armisen. He's like, it happens the whole time. It, ha it just happens. And, and, and it's the truth. The people there and the personalities there, there are no huge assholes right now. There just aren't, which is amazing. And I, and I credit Seth uh, Myers you know, to, with that, because... And Tina before him. Yeah, yeah, I think they really, like, they want funny, obviously, but also they don't want, they don't want jerks. Because um, it is just competitive. It's only competitive. There's 17 cast members right now, and as many writers, so, you know, 40-ish uh, creative minds trying to land eight spots a v week. Vying for 42 minutes. Exactly, yeah. Um, so it's just competitive, and you certainly are like, why, the, why did they pick that one over mine? You know, you have those moments, but everybody that's on the show right now has the ability to step back and be like, hey, that was great, way to go, which is huge. It's yeah. awesome. What a different experience. Yeah, to yeah be very to, much so. Yeah, most of those work environments should be kind of a supportive, but they, yeah, you know, the, the rest of us who are just fans have always heard yeah, I think there's been the other. I, I've, I've heard that there's been the other. And I think you're right. The fish always stinks from the head. Mm -hmm. Either the person in, in charge, be it Tina or Seth or whoever, yeah. wants a happy camper, they don't care. Yeah. Uh, or they're just not happy themselves. Um, which has obviously been a big part of the, uh, the show in various camps over the years. Mm -hmm. um, you've seen the show. You know what it means to play Who Tweeted. I believe the time has come for you to wager and risk... Nothing, but possibly when here he comes, your host, Sammy Sam Levine. Oh, it's, it's getting me filmed. Celebrities have so much to say. Who tweeted? Is the game we're gonna play? We're coming up afterwards, saying <laughs> I've got to stand. Gang green. It's some gang green in my foot. Seriously, my ass fell asleep. This deep conversation with Taryn. Sorry. This no, no, it's yeah. this is the, wonderful. The SNL in particular, people are always like, "Oh, sorry to ask." I'm like, "I will talk about this all day. <laughs> I love this job, and I have this job. Oh, yeah. and I will talk about it." Like when I go as a guest just to watch the show, mm -hmm. like it's all I can do to talk about for the next month. Yeah, is what I saw behind the scenes, yeah. and oh, and they had this sketch, and they pulled that line at the last minute, and you wouldn't believe it. And, totally. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's one of those American institutions also, mm -hmm. quite frankly. What are we, 30, year 37? 39. 39. 1975. Oh, my God, you're right. Yeah. That, that doesn't really exist in any, any most art forms that you can think of. Yes. Um, maybe there's the 40th year of the Playboy Jazz Festival. You know, one of those <laughs> ongoing <laughs> things that people have reunions for and yeah. previous casts and stuff. You know, when it becomes that historic, forgive us for... No. For, uh, you know, going on and on and on. But yeah. Sammy! But that's not what I came here to talk <laughs> about. I could do that from my seat. Please tell us more. I came here to do a little game called Who Tweeted. Are you familiar with the Why can't you rules? do this from your seat? <laughs> We've had that discussion. Weird. If you knew how many times I have asked Sam, do not get You're up. standing very close to me. It w I'm, I'm more cl closer you're, to you're Kevin. Now you closer watched, to Kevin. You watched the, uh, the Tom Hanks episode. Yeah, yeah. I was not I allowed so. to directly look him in the eye. Did you know that? Tommy? Yeah. Oh, wow. Strictly forbidden. What Only jerk. Kevin was allowed to look him yeah. in the eye. He, he played Walt Disney, but unlike Walt Disney, he does not like Jews. <laughs> Did not care Speaking for either of us. Um, it's, not a, it's not a... a if, if you're familiar with the rules, I'm not going to go over them Don't again. do them. No, you don't don't do it. Let the listeners figure Lord it out. knows our fans know how this game works. Great. Okay. Five points correct, three points wrong. Here we go. Okay. Tweet number one. Tyra, Paris, Bieber. Oh, I forgot. $20 at stake. As, as always, we're playing for Dancing Andrew Jackson. Again, he only danced in our old location, which we've been out of for like three years. Yep. On yep. <laughs> yep. Right. Tweet. Oh, look at that. Number. He's, he's dancing. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well done, Capo. Thank you. Sir. Tweet number one. Live your dream. Be creative. Taryn. Bieber. Starting off strong. That's correct. Fuck. 
It was too obvious. You think some of these are obvious? Some of them are not. You know, Hanks tried the Bieber every time and see where it got him. No, I know. No, that's true Bieber. Yeah. All right. Water bit did not play. <laughs> did not play. Did not that play. Didn't yeah, that is the callback I've ever me. seen. It didn't land. You, what you need to do is throw it at me, but you were worried you might hit Jamie, yeah, so it's no, not worth the risk. Cable. Not worth the risk. <laughs> oh, we've got questions from your fans, by the way. Also. Tweet. Oh, okay. Jamie Number. was kind enough to send me a bunch, right, okay. Jamie? Thanks, doll. Two. Love going to my chiropractor to get adjusted. Kevin. Taryn. Oh. Paris. That is correct. Oh, yes! We have not had two positive correct answers in maybe a year. It's been, at least. Okay. At yeah. least. Tweet number three. <sighs> when people meet me and assume I'm a party girl, hashtag frustrating. Taryn. Hilton. Gotta be. Tyra. Tyra. What? Tyra. Yeah. What? I was going to say it, it must have been a trick. You I, wouldn't have put it on there if it, if it weren't a trick. But right. well, I was going to say also, Bieber just for the laugh. Yeah. Right. I also don't want to miss the obvious. No, you know it's what a, I mean? It's the fear of missing it. the obvious. Sure, That's sure. That's why I did what I did. That's why sure. Jamie is so good at putting these questions together. Yeah. Or these tweets. We've gotten a thumbs up and a shrug from Jamie yeah. on this podcast. Sorry. This is, <laughs> no, no. this is my time whenever I can actually like go in and like do gotcha. yeah, I don't have to yeah. Gotcha. Sorry. No, no. Wow. I'm so I apologize. Now. Go ahead and tune out. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> Tweet number four. Mm -hmm. Learning how to Ollie on a snowboard. Kevin Taren. Paris. Gosh, dang it. Tied at positive two. That <laughs> Ooh. was incorrect. Ooh, that's a beaver? The beebs. Oh, so you did have a correct. You you, you were loaded. All right, it's tied the up after, after four questions. Tweet number five. <laughs> Loving all the legend and newbie Grammy collabs. Taryn. Tyra. That is correct. Strong comeback. Motherfuck. I swear to Christ. I'm going to rip Ooh. out your Out of how many? Uh, that was ten? five. We got three to go. Three, eight. Okay. Unless, of course, so there's, there's a, a tie. strategy where I shut Unless, my mouth. Unless, of course, there's a tie. Tweet number In bed, cuddling with my little love bugs, watching cartoons, hashtag loving life. Kevin Paris. Tied at seven, son of a bitch. You're going down, sweet oh, pants. Oh, I'm not to break it to you. May come down to this tiebreaker. Okay. Tweet number seven. <laughs> Killing it at the Grammys. Taryn. Bieber. It has to be. It has to be. Paris. Come on! No, she's not! This is bullshit! No, she is not! <laughs> I've seen them all and she wasn't! <laughs> Gentlemen, this is a very close game. We've not had uh, it this close in a okay. while, Kenny! Because uh, here's what we got. Here's what we got. It's a tweet number eight coming up, and okay. it's only a three point differential. Right. Which means if I just lay back and do nothing, right. I can't lose. Uh, that's, no, incorrect. You, that's incorrect. If he if rings in and gets right. it correct, you Four. will lose by two points. Yeah. If you ring in and get it wrong, it will be a tie. Okay. Math not my strength. The eighth and potentially final tweet. Good to be on the first break in a while. Spending some quality time with my family. Kevin Paris. Ladies and gentlemen, we are tied. It's Tyra. It's Tyra. Beebs! Oh, wow! The motherfucking Beebs. Well, this Jeez. is it. Okay. I love it when we make it to a tiebreaker okay. tweet. It doesn't happen. I love it, and I don't even need to... I already know it. I feel better about your chances. I know I'll this be tweet. Okay. The tiebreaking tweet. <clears throat> Up in the air. Taryn Bieber. That is your winner, you. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you! Taryn, kill him! You! <laughs> you! <Yeah! laughs> <laughs> that is. 194 shows. Someone gets it! Someone gets it! Finally! There it is! <laughs> yeah! Here, you can just chuck I'm that. I'm the best! <laughs> Get rid of you have a couple against me, say I ain't the best! <laughs> Put a sucker like Trap Tree, Crab Tree against me! Crab Tree, <laughs> the best! And who tweets? Oh. I, can you ask for more? Don't you ever talk about him. No! Don't you ever talk about me! <laughs> ask who was talking about me. Oh. Wow, thank you. Do I really take this? Um, yes, you really do. Okay. Sammy! That's how you play who tweeted. Fun. Thank you. Celebrities.
have so much to say. Who tweeted? Is the game that we just played. Please don't throw that mug where you don't have very many left. I know. I can tell. That's all I can I can tell that was valuable. Yeah, you get the uh, the travel version, the travel mug version of the show cup. How but about, boy, did these break How quickly. about the water ring that's going to be on this table now yeah. that I threw my coaster? It was Tom Hanks, the first one of 193 guests, who pointed out, why do you have coasters? <laughs> <laughs> for this that horrible... was Larry. Oh, it was Larry? It was Larry. Yeah. Uh, and I said, it's for the sound. Hi, Sam. Okay, I hit the very lip of the table, <laughs> which, for the record, I could not do again it's if I tried. It's the smallest surface space. <laughs> I yeah, could sure. not do that again if I I'll give you $45 yeah. if, in three chances, you can do it again. Here we go. You give wow. me two dollars if you can. Very well. Okay. So close. <laughs> oh, slid right off. One. Last <laughs> one. Ah. And two. Three. Two dollars. Ah. Wow. Okay. Overshot it every time. Now then. Yes, sir. Boy, um, that was fun for our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> not the not the viewers. There's no way you're editing that. That's on the Christmas reel. <laughs> Fantastic. This, this episode needs to be viewed. It needs to be watched because you visual. have to, like, yeah. too many present, visuals. Yeah, there's too many visuals. There you there you go. Go. Thank you, Sammy. Yep. Never let it be said. By the way, I don't welch. Yes, $2 sir. in singles available. <laughs> like that? I rarely have cash on me. Poker uh, player. What? Uh, <laughs> uh, this first one of many, Jamie, comes to you uh, yelling. She loves it. Um, looks like from the Twitterverse at okay. Christopher underscore H. This is a tweet five. T5. T5, T5 forever now. Speaking of comedic gods who were let go from SNO prematurely, yeah. oh, Dave yeah. Koechner, perfect Great. example. Mm -hmm. um, you know how the tweet fives work? The this or that, Coke or Pepsi, no correct answer? Oh, okay, great. Uh, wild and out or short circuits? Uh, oh. Wild oh. and out, excuse wild me. Now, uh, wild now. That was the um, Cannon, Nick, Nick Cannon. Cannon. They were both Nick Cannon's projects. Uh -huh. Short Circuits was a uh, sketch show, while now it was uh, comedy sports who's line, competitive who's line in the urban hip hop community. Wasn't Short Circuits the third, uh, the second sequel to Short Circuit? <clears throat> yeah, Short Circuit. Short Circuit, Short Z. Circuit 2, Short Circuits. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And it was yeah. all the other Johnny Fives that had come oh, to I life? I wish. Johnny's 1, 2, 3, and 4. Oh, Mr. Levine, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's watching or any other title? Nobody's watching. Community or Scrubs? Community. SNL or Mad TV? SNL. Yes, dear, or according to Jim? <laughs> uh, yes, dear. Correct. You got four out of five correct. Wait, that okay. reminds me of so a close. story. You remember when we ran into um, Jim Belushi, Jim Belushi sure. and he <laughs> was using an according to Jim keychain, and it just really made me yeah. laugh. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it just really made me laugh. We couldn't believe it. It tickled me. We thought it was kind of historical. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. He held on to the according to Jim <laughs> keychain. Hey. Uh, this one Jim, comes to These are my keys. See? Uh, Bubbles, at Tammy Bubbles. Turner TTS from the Twitterverse, what's the scariest thing that has ever happened during your run on SNL? A fantastic question. Wow. The scariest thing. The scariest thing. Um, <clears throat> I guess the closest to scariest in how I translate it is when Mr. Justin Bieber was hosting, mm. uh, they were about to start a sketch address, and a wall started falling on his head. You and was, saw this happening. Yeah, and it, it was like coming down and it almost hit him and they caught it at the last second. You did nothing to save him. I, it's not my job. <laughs> I'm not going to cross the union lines. But you could have union used yeah. the union rules. Like, very strict yeah, about You could that. have used your superhero strength from your eyes. I, it is a small space, but I was as far away from where he was within the sp small space. But you saw page. it happening in slow yeah, motion. It, it was, everybody did. Like, oh, <gasps> there's a gasp and the sketch has started. It, it's one of the best. I, I think it's online. It's, it, is, it is online with commentary. Yeah, it's so from great. From Hader and the writer, I think. And right? Rob Klein and yeah. John Solomon. Yeah, John Solomon wrote uh, uh, MacGruber, which is, oh, I yeah. think, the funniest movie of the last 10 years. And uh, Rob Klein is a new head writer. Check that out after this show ends. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so that was the scariest moment by far, I would think. Yeah, that was like someone's at physical risk. Right. Yeah. Um, Non-death threatening, scary. Scary. <clears throat> Non-death threatening, scary. Like, is there a live moment in front of the not dress, mm -hmm. but live? You're on TV. We're as fans believing that every yeah. week something horrible is about to happen. But is it? 
and does it? Uh, I have been in two sketches. And, and yes, I, I think there's someone who would be terrified by this, and I love it because it's specific only to this job. Last sketch of the night, the 10 to 1, <clears throat> where they save 30, all the best we're for. 30 seconds over. We're 30 seconds over, we may have to cut something at the end, or we may just cut out of it. And I've been in two sketches where you're performing the sketch, and over the shoulder of the actor you're acting with, the writer's there scribbling, like saying, don't say this, writing in a new card, putting, like, say that, this new line, or we're cutting out here, so that's the end. Uh, and I've also been in a sketch where it just, like, just ended. Like, that's the end. Oh, okay, this is a great one, this is a great one. Jesus. Not scary, but hil hilarious, but like, no! Uh, Bruce Willis sure. is here. <clears throat> There's a Centauri vodka sketch where he's, like, a centaur mascot for this new brand of vodka. Uh, that sketch on air ended two and a half pages early because because Bruce thought it, it was sort of like a similar cue. He's like, oh, when that said, I leave and I walk up stage, and there's literally a page and a half left <laughs> of I story and sketch. comedy to come and that just button. never was, and a button, and, yeah, and it just he just went, this is done, <laughs> and, then, and another sketch was able to be put back in because because of that, which is hilarious. But I had a. Literally, like the next line was supposed to be a cutaway to me as Bruce Jenner, and you can hear Nassim say the setup over the Chiron at the end, like they have the outside establishment. He's like, "You're freaking out, Bruce Jenner," and that's the end of the sketch. Like that's a weird last line <laughs> to say over a building. As I'm standing there making a Bruce Jenner face, and like he starts walking, and we're all, "Don't what? Okay, on to the next one." <laughs> He's pretty awesome. Yeah, um, a, a great question. Yeah. Uh, thank um, you. I'm sorry, but but he's honestly answered most of these questions already during the show. That's yeah. Well, that's what, happened. And, and that's what happened. Even the, there was one about Bruce Willis, and then you answered, you just answered it right oh, now. Like it's, yeah, so. Oh, you're good. That, you're it good. is my fault for going to the fan questions an hour forty minute into the interview. <laughs> no, I've got to stop doing it. Honest, that. honest to God, you've you've, answered, you've gone through all of these questions, so everyone should be happy. Um, awesome. I I want to ask. I won, I won that game. Well, oh, dude, you <laughs> crushed that game. It was a close one, game. too. I don't know if you can remember, but you kind of celebrated. What? When you won. He came out. <laughs> oh, my God, you saw that. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm never, so sorry. I've never seen anything like it. Oh, man. It. Yeah, it was almost in my face. Just shy. <laughs> Just shy of I'm a horrible person. Oh, man. For even sitting down and attempting yeah. to, to beat you at something. <laughs> so you say you played organized sports in high school. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. I see. Is, it, is there any competition <laughs> on the out? side of a mountain? Yeah, apparently. Man. Yeah, right in the valley. <laughs> a hill over from Holcomb Valley, bro. <laughs> um, uh, how, how much? How much are you actually able to do on the comic book on a weekly basis? So they're sending you mm -hmm. drafts mm -hmm. of everything. But how much writing are you able to do? I do the entire first draft myself. And then I send that to Mark, and Mark helps me nudge it this way or that. Forgive my and, ignorance. And correct How many pages is that? 22. That first draft. 22. Yeah. So it's like page one, panel one, a helicopter flying over the ocean. Page two, right. someone from the forest below looks up over their shoulder. They say, right. here they come, right. and so on and so on. So you know your family's coming to live with you. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I will have to put in less FaceTime. <laughs> you know, I'm. Yeah. Well, no, I'm losing. I'm losing plane time, which is where I get so much work done. Yeah. Completely and utterly. On the plane. Yeah. There's no greater place. Yeah. You know, a lot of times I'll have a uh, weekend gig and we'll fly here Sunday morning. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I can guarantee that I'm going to get work done on that flight home for the dossier, yeah. so that I don't worry about it as much on Saturday until I uh, crash. Pass out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, not that crash because I'm on a plane, but I pass know. out. Got dark because I'm like, so tired. I was never here. <laughs> he disappeared. <laughs> it was the ghost of Kevin Pollock. While I can't we believe were talking, it. He vanished. Um, I also love the echo of the laugh of the control room in the hallway. You don't get that when you listen pretty to the show. Great. At home? No, no, no. You can't hear it, but it's pretty great. Um, tell, tell me about um, the the Jedediah because. You know, in the in the dossier, uh, J Mac was kind enough to offer up a, a interview you had given where you talked about. I guess the question that they asked was much more succinct and kind of perfect about 
the moment where you sort of arrive on the show and you had said, when you get something on update and someone says, hey, that's probably going to come back. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What Hader found with Stefan sure. is, is not rare. It's become a part of the show. I remember Dana talking about it 100 years ago. If you, if you can get... When Hans and Franz <clears throat> appeared on, on Update, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know that it was the launch of Hans and Franz, probably right. wasn't, but when they were on Update, mm -hmm. it became this other thing. Yeah, yeah. Because then you're stepping out of a sketch, and you're talking as the character sure. to camera and the audience. It's when I get the most nervous, still. I would think, because it's almost a form of stand-up. Yeah, which I don't do or never, have never done. Attempted once and was terrible at it. It's not for everyone. It's not... <laughs> It's amazing. Yeah, it's a it lot of harder. Cojones. It's uh, it's, you're on a tight it takes rope. a warrior. It takes a warrior spirit. You live and die by your own wits. There's no writers. Yeah. There's no castmates. There's yeah. no cue cards. It's terrible. If I may. You may, please. All I right. agree. I, I agree. Uh, Jebediah. Yes. Kind of hits from the first mm, laugh line. Oh, yeah. Th yeah, that was. I mean, it was out of the box. That was a gift. It's a great look. Yes. It's a fantastic it look, which is physical. huge. That's huge. Um, it's a crazy story, the original story, that there was one guy who gave a negative review of the Gettysburg Address, which is just absurd. Yeah. The, the speech to end all speeches, at least in American history. And that was one of those pop culture moments where, as you mentioned early in the week, mm -hmm. Seth must have said, we need to do something about this. No way. The exact opposite. All right, good. <clears throat> this is the Lady Gaga episode. I believe. Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga, apologize. Is that right? I don't know if that's right. Uh, Gaga's probably right. I, it was a late night shoot the night before. That's what I remember, to the point where I didn't get home till 7 and a.m. Mm -hmm. on Saturday, having to be back at work at noon. If I may, funnier story, if you tell it it was a late night shoot and I got home at 7 p.m. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, from now on. Yeah. It's a gift. It's a gift. Uh, thank you. I'm a giver. Uh, I say I'm not coming in till two if that's okay. That works fine. The we can rehearse other things before you come in. I wake up at 1.30 to a text from Seth that's like, hey, we have this idea for a character. We're writing it up. Do you want to try it? Sure. Sure, why not? Um, I had a heaviest show anyway on top of that. So I come in. I go up to the ninth floor, which is where the writer's room is by the studio read through it and like, oh, this is funny, it's getting some chuckles, but was by no means in the shape it was by the time it was on air. Right. They're like, we'll try it, we'll put a look together. I get the look and I'm like, oh, I see, okay, okay, I have a better idea of who this guy is, this sort of, you know, foppish uh, bitch, you know, he's a bitch. Um, <laughs> yes. And have fun with it and we do the run through and the crew likes it and that's always a great indicator. Sure, they've seen crew, everything. Because they've seen everything. And they've got a donut in one hand. Exactly right, yeah. If you're, if you're funnier, they are, you know, the, if you're as funny as the donut is delicious, you're doing something good. <laughs> that's a teamster yeah. rule. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I got to. Um, and then, yeah, at dress, it went like gangbusters. At dress, it went great with no mistakes and there's a looseness in that um, for me. I like any character where there's a little bit of, because Groundlings is, it's your sketch, and whatever happens on stage is kind of up to you. So, Which is not the case with <clears throat> SNL. People very forget precise. that it's never improvised, and Almost they never. really rather you not. Exactly. They prefer you don't, and I love to. <laughs> sure. I love mm -hmm. to and, and miss it. I miss that part of performing. So any time there's a character that's a little loose, and, and I'm not saying that I improvise a bunch of jokes, but there's moments that are more play and banter between Seth and I that I really like. And that's the biggest indicator is that Seth was having a blast. Yeah, and he's not afraid to have a blast. Yeah, in no, that he's great. role, he's great at that. But he, you, you know, you know the sincere laugh and the "I'm setting you up" laugh, and right. there was a lot of sincerity to the laughter, and that's so fun. And it and dress goes great, and then it air, they have to trim it down, so I lose a couple of my favorite lines, which I'm like, ah, that's fine. Um, and it still goes very well, but it comes to a run. That's like uh, February 9th will forever go down in infamy because that's the day you gave that boring ass speech. And then that feeds right into another joke. Sometimes you grab the word that's on the next line on the cards by accident. So I said, that's the day you gave that speech that was boring ass <laughs> trying to save it. <laughs> and this is a thing that's been going great. The audience has been fully on board and just crickets. Like everybody in that room went, 
that's not supposed to sound like that. <laughs> there was a rhythm, there was music happening, and you just played a, the wrong note. <laughs> and 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 I got tickled by how desperate I was to fix it, <laughs> that I somehow thought saying boring ass louder would make it a joke. So I was like, because it's supposed to be that you gave that boring ass speech. I could have used a couple of kamikaze after that, and, it, and what it was was that's the, you gave that speech that was boring ass. <laughs> and so now I'm like, my face is red and veins are popping to absolute silence. And I am dressed as an idiot from another century. And, and yeah, lost it a little bit. Because I, I don't like to lose it. I, I think our job is to make others lose it. When you say lose it, you mean break. Break, yeah, laugh, exactly. Laugh, laugh at your own. So the only times that I do is when something goes askew that was not planned for. Because you know, if, if you break enough, one day you can host The Tonight Show. That's right. Hey, hey, he said it, he said it. Uh, as a representative of uh, NBC Universal and the uh, Golden Company, I acknowledge the joke you made and will continue on with this interview uh, with uh, no significant opinion on the subject. Um, yeah, and so uh, we'll see more of that. Uh, I think, I would think so. I think we'll try it, yeah, but. I'm gonna ask a question that Jamie brought up. Were you gonna ask yeah, a question about? I was gonna ask about... this question too, because we were talking about Vinnie Vidalci, that yeah. one. What makes characters just go away that I feel that are working? Like, I love Vinnie Vidalci, and then he just, like. And also the yeah. a-holes. Yeah, two a-holes, like, they just went away and you never saw them again, like but both of those Like, they're on two or three times, and sure. we think we love them, and mm -hmm. they killed, and then for every reason, they're never seen again. Yeah. It's, it just um, happened? It's just part of it? Or is yeah. it like an oversaturation of it? Because I feel like maybe you see it too much in like one season sure. or something, and then they go, I don't know. There's a little bit of, there's a bit of both. There's so many hurdles. You're, you're writing material for a minimum of three, probably a minimum of four audiences. You're writing material that'll play at the table on Wednesday. Huge. You're writing material that will play to the audience in, in the studio. You're writing material that'll play to the audience at home yeah. that you don't know how they feel about it till at the earliest 12 hours later. Or I guess immediately because of Twitter now, that, that helps. Can I guess what the fourth audience is? Sure. Lauren? I was going to say myself. Sure. Fuck that guy, man. Hey, fuck, I don't care what he's saying. Lauren, I'm so sorry. Lauren, I'm so sorry. I want to make new friends. And I, man, I don't give a fuck what Lauren thinks of me. I'm my own man. Well, Lauren, thank you for the opportunity. You changed my life. Lauren, you changed my life. Thank you so much. Man, I'm a straight up cold ass killer, man. I do what I do. Thank you, Lauren. If you have any ideas of characters I should or should not be playing in the future, please let me know, Lauren. <laughs> um... So sometimes it's the writer who just goes, I don't want to do it again. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's the show and the table that goes, we've seen this. We're not going to help you along with it. Uh, and sometimes it's the audience who goes, if it doesn't play as strong, what's the point of doing it again if you can't, yeah. if you can't elevate or if you can't do it better than the last time? That's yeah. kind of the rule of thumb. Um, you always have to hide <clears throat> Yeah, exactly, and 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 so we will probably love something, whether it's killing for the, uh, those other reasons, because we're not there. Sure. In the writers' room, we're not there in front of the audience, even. Uh, I've seen a holes be cut at dress. I've seen um, uh, I've seen a, a Stefan cut, which, which was odd, but that was very early on, and then came back the next week. I think that was more logistical stuff. Um, but I've seen significant recurring sketches be pulled. We've, we've now done at Dress three J-Pops since the last one mm. that, have, that have not made the show. Wow. Yeah. It's just a part of the show? Yeah. And I, <clears throat> my opinion is, is just that, uh, some t oh, that that's another audience is the host, what the host likes participating in, you know what I mean? Because uh, uh, your sketch can live or die between Dress and Air based on a host going, no, I love that, let me do that, or I don't feel like doing that. Right. And I think that's maybe occurred a couple times. Um, Sammy, your last opportunity to ask one of your questions. We like to, every now and then, offer Sam uh, a special opportunity, oh, one Jesus. that's earmarked for the guest that we know ahead of time that he cares more about oh. than I, other guests. I was really ill-prepared for this, but... Um, oh, my God. If... Uh, I don't know if um, any of your hosts need like um, stand-ins. Uh huh. But I'm I'm looking to expand. No, nope, we do it, guys. Thank you so much. This has been so much fun. <laughs> really, uh, huge fan of yours, Kevin. Jamie, you're so lovely. Sam. Oh. Um, <laughs> All right. I guess. 
Uh, yes, that's uh, not. We don't. We don't have. We, the, you know, the <laughs> only times we have stand-ins are the stage managers. So, uh, sorry, you looking for a new stage manager? <laughs> you, you want a stage manager? <laughs> Think about <laughs> it. Think about it's, it. It's something. Dude, you're running with Broken Lizard. I just want to get my Ride the Broken there. Lizard wave. You're doing great. Uh, <laughs> you know, podcasting doesn't pay what it used to. <laughs> What did it used to pay? It used to pay nothing. And now there's some money. Oh, good for you. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's awesome. Now there's the promise of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Before there was no chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you, there's... You'll get more cups. Two more years? Um... I, 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 I don't, uh, I don't want to pretend yeah. uh, that I care anymore. Great. Thank you. <laughs> um... Will you uh, ever get used to uh, the New York uh, apartment? I guess you won't know till your family gets there. That'll make it different. Yeah. Even even walking around my apartment that we that we own, I'm realizing now like my kitchen has been like, oh, I guess I can put food there. And now it's very quickly becoming, oh, we need to. This is our family home now, and we yeah. need to stock that up. So that that will definitely change my relationship. I'm excited to explore the surrounding areas, yeah. which I've never done. Right. I'm excited to take my daughter to Sleepy Hollow around Halloween, which will be so fun. You know, stuff like that, sort of true East Coast experiences. Yeah. Hamptons, I've never done that. So uh, a little bit of that, but I I think in my core I'm a West Coast guy. I I, I just I just feel that I am. Well, I think the born and raised. Yeah, defines that because mm -hmm. I'm born and raised wildly older, so I have more years invested in the raised part. Great complexion, though, man. Sure, sure. Small Keeping pores. up with that, tiny pores. Elasticity. That's damn. Key, yeah, and feeding off the younger, <laughs> uh, like a vampire. Kalima. <laughs> Kalima. I'm Dom Shugai. I got it. See, um, but we got to plan more, 82 for that one. Yeah, we got to yeah, plan the Club that. 33. That's got to yeah. happen. Oh man, um, that's already in the works. Oof. Um, yeah, you've got to come. Angel. You've got to come back to LA uh, during the summer months. Please. The, even though you guys will have the home there, you'll still come back. We think. For oh, the, uh, I would think at least once every other month or something. Come on. Yeah. Uh, because we've got to set up the Club 33. That'd that has amazing. to happen. I can't thank you enough. You I'm already not have. A, I'm By saying a, that, you already have. Okay. Because I had nothing more. Yeah, yeah. Great. So thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, sit there wildly uncomfortable, uh, con uncomfortably okay. while I uh, wrap things up for the folks at home. But Great. honestly and truly, um, I meant it when I said it on the street, and I mean it even more now. I truly am a fan. Thank you. You're extremely good. On the street, he said I was a genius, and now you're saying a fan. Well, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to give you one opportunity to get back to genius. Okay. Because... Okay. If you do, if you did by any bizarre chance hang in for the full Tom Hanks, which you couldn't possibly have the two hours and 42 minutes, I did. we do a little thing called the Larry King game on the show. Sure, sure. Are okay. you familiar with it? I am. Okay. Yeah. There's your camera. Okay. I want a bad Larry King impression. Okay. If you have a good one, I'm not interested. Okay. And then share something about Larry. Nobody wants to know. Okay. And then go to the phones. If the name of the city is funny. Great, great, great. Sounding. You, right. You've hit all three marks. Okay, great. When you're ready, sir. This is Larry King live here reporting from CNN. We're going to cut to a commercial break. When we come back, I show you my large jar of fingernail clippings, and we'll have a deep, in-depth conversation with John from Zizix, Nevada. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we drive by, Zizix. Zizix I don't Road. Think anyone has used Zizix yet. No. Oh, That's no, no. Great pull. Yeah. Thank you very much. Deep. Yeah. Thank deep. you for that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Oh. This is kind of a very LA. Thing. Yeah, well, that, that only happens on the drive to Vegas drive. from yeah, yeah. Los Angeles. From There's no other way to be aware of this. <laughs> uh, okay, good. Uh, we have a uh, an end roll from a sponsor. Imagine that. Who should we do this one as? Who did uh, Taryn? What about Ashton nobody? Kutcher. Sorry? Ashton Kutcher. I yeah, his you Ashton. do it as Ashton Kutcher. Oh, no, you. No, I oh, love man. his, okay. his okay. Ashton. It's amazing. All right. Now that the show's over, <laughs> make sure to head over to squarespace.com to start your free trial with no credit card required. <laughs> Make sure the offer code Pollock is used to get 10% off and to let Squarespace know we sent you. I thank you. Wow. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, I think we have to come up with another 20 for that last. Yeah, at least. <laughs> okay. At least. <laughs> um, next week, if you care to join us, it's the Michael Showalter, uh, awesome. and, and then uh, Anna Ferris after him, and then... Um, Curtis Armstrong, Armstrong, Sunday after that. 
Oh boy. Uh, for your burger fan. Or Charles Demar. Oh no, please. They get off dead. I uh, please. The the list is endless. <laughs> He's got an IMDb page that'll choke you. Yes, it will. Um, one crazy summer guy. I'll say it. Yes. Yep. Yeah. One, one crazy summer. <laughs> please. That's that's the more of a Joel Murray joint. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the moment where his dad meets him on the dock and says, I'm proud of you, boy. Um, oh, what? No, don't blank on his name. Oh, uh, SCTV, no, don't blank on his name. You know him. You know what happened to him? He died. <laughs> Joe, Joe Flaherty. Flaherty. Joe Flaherty. I was going to let you get there. Joe Flaherty. Yeah. I, was, I knew I was Joe. letting you get there. Yeah. I'm proud of you, boy. And he hugs him on the dock. Uh, One crazy summer. Joe, Joe, let me tell you why Joe Flaherty is the most amazing sketch comedian. Because in he was in his 50s, 60s when I worked with him. Yeah. And I would ask him about an old SCTV thing. Not only would he tell me a 10-minute story, then he would start doing it with me. Awesome. He would do Guy Caballero with me That's so cool. all day and night. I guess it's if amazing. there's anything to take away from this, Kenny, it's that, um, Taryn, you need to learn how to be that generous with your time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've appreciated your commitment. Yeah. You're getting up into characters and the voices and yeah. whatnot. But unless you're willing to do the sketches okay. with the yeah. Yeah, you're yeah, you're yeah. just phoning it in. All right, all right. fair enough. Thank you. Uh, John, I, I like call. to work with people who are better than me. You know, it elevates my game. <laughs> um, is that a touche? I think that's a touche. Is that Sam? And that's so undeserving. No, that no. You become this whipping boy, but no. it's a little bit of a role. It, a little bit. It's because it's because I'm away from the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. not allowed at the table. <laughs> Unlike when David Krumholtz was here. Right. That's another story. Well, um, uh, Josh and J Mac. And Samantha and Daniel Overland, our media maven. Or Danielle. Or Danielle. I say Daniel. Yeah, you did. I was like, do we have a David? We have she a David. Has a little penis. <laughs> she has no. Are we sure? I, it's what I read. I may have gotten that one wrong then, because I thought for sure that was a total lady. You, cockless? Cockless lady. <laughs> Is what you're saying. No penis. Complete full on no female. Pain. Complete full on woman by, from birth. Okay. <laughs> Right. Maybe I'm wrong, right. but I'm pretty sure I'm not. I'm not above admitting that okay. I'm wrong. Okay. <laughs> I was wrong about that, and I apologize. Danielle, you do not have a penis. <laughs> that I can prove. Sure. <laughs> uh, okay. I think that wraps it up for this week, and what a tremendous opportunity this was for us uh, to spend some time with uh, someone that we're all such a fan of. So thanks again, Taryn. Thank you. And until next time, and as always, get out of my face. <laughs>